Hey, so. it's Tuesday, and I'm Ultra David. And I'm James Chen. How's everybody going? So we've got just a ton of stuff to talk about <laughs> so today. This is like <laughs> one of the most packed weekends that I can recall. It's not even of events, just like Everything. of stuff. Yeah, Everything, everything uh, happened this weekend. So we're going to yeah. talk about, as you can see, a ton of results. Combo Breaker, E-League, Red Bull, Kumite. Also, Corey Gaming had a good video mm-hmm. that we will talk about. Uh, mm-hmm. We're also going to talk about new games and updates to games. No, it's new games and slash game updat. <laughs> updats. we got plenty of updats to talk about. Uh, of course, Street Fighter V, Injustice is still yeah. new. Uh-huh. Um, Ultra Street Fighter Two came out. Uh, I feel like I'm Rev2. Rev2 came uh, out. A lot of stuff. Uh, and then, um, yes, yeah, Skullgirls Mobile. I mean, there's just there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So uh, uh, let's jump into it, shall we? Sure. Look, we're going to start. Normally, we start with another topic and then we go to the results. But we are starting with results this weekend because this weekend had three of probably the most important tournaments uh, of the year. Dude, even before we get into the results themselves, yeah, I just wanted to address that uh, point. Uh, uh, First of all... For Street Fighter V in particular, I felt like this was one of the most triumphant weekends, and also simultaneously one of the worst weekends. <laughs> Interesting, okay. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, the combo breaker was awesome, right? Mm-hmm. Red Bull Kumite was great. We were there. It was yeah. awesome. E-League. E-League was awesome. Those are all super great. Each one individually, great for the game, great for the community. Awesome job to everybody involved. Super unfortunate that it happened all at the same time. Oh, yeah, 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 I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh-huh, so uh-huh, uh-huh. huge thumbs up, but yeah, the wow, fact that, that super sucked. I mean, look, I'm not... But it was all at the same time. It was absolutely the right call to make, but it is a shame, for example, that Punk and Fudo did not get to play in Combo Break. Right. Right, you know, luck of the draw, and oh, that's course. the way it's got to work. Yeah, yeah, every... Look, we this is all back to that whole like VIP rooms and skipping pools things like that. But anybody who enters the tournament is just another player. Bingo. I don't care if you're punk. I yeah. don't care if you just. I mean, punk doesn't care. He just won a crap ton well, of money. Well, whatever. But you know. But like, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. It doesn't. You are another player. You cannot get any special treatment when you enter a tournament Indeed. unless it's an invitational. Well, fine. Right. Obviously, if it's an open bracket, you cannot get any uh, any sort of. Uh, special treatment no so. for sure so uh yeah i mean that's why the those guys didn't get to play at combo breaker but just the fact that that was a problem is unfortunate like stuff happened last weekend and i'm sure stuff is gonna happen this coming weekend too right. but at the level of each of those three things not really i mean is it do you think it's because everyone was like memorial day weekend let's go you know i have a funny is feeling is red that bull was... france worried about memorial day weekend <laughs> okay fair i don't know <laughs> I don't even think about that. I don't know, man. Uh, Maybe that, I mean, certainly that is true for Combo Breaker, but that's been the weekend of the Chicago Major for Uh half a dozen years, maybe longer than that's how long I've been going, and it's always been that weekend. So, uh... E-League might have targeted that one, Maybe, again, I don't know, does does it matter what weekend it is if it's on Friday night? Right. I don't know. I feel like probably not. I don't know, but whatever. That that definitely sucks that they were all the same Mm -hmm. weekend. So... You know, I'm sure that things are at a level now where Capcom is giving out licenses, which does not happen, uh, which didn't happen for many, many years, because why even bother, right? Um, I feel like they really got to pay better attention to what's happening on what weekend. So. Yeah. <sighs> so that so there's that. But at the same time, again, I don't want to be too much of a downer, because each of those things was super awesome. <laughs> they were so good. And even... To the point where four of the players from E League went to Red Bull Kumite, and I think the other two players managed to play in Combo Breaker, if I'm not mistaken. I'd have to look at the name list of names. No, I would have to look too. Yeah. Yeah, but I know four of them went to yeah. uh, to, to Red Bull Kumite. Obviously, they didn't do so hot because they were jet lagged and everything, but. And that's not even necessarily true because one of them did do surprisingly much better than everyone expected, probably. So, all right, let's just get into it. Let's, let's get, into, get it. into these results, right? What you want to start with, let's man? Let's start with Combo Breaker because this is a premiere event, and also this one is for every game. Everything. So this one, dude, I can't. Oh my, it was a Ki World Cup thing, a Ko Weapon Injustice, a Street Fighter, and to me, I mean, look, everybody kept saying it afterwards that. They're just saying that Combo Breaker is probably, you know, outside of EVO, the most important fighting game event 
uh, of the year. Yes, and, I believe and that's like true. that's we're only like part way through the year, but I think that's already kind of firmly established yeah. at this point. I think it's very unlikely that anything's going to take that spot. Yes, and um, you know they do such a good job catering to people there as they do to the viewers. The venue is open 24 hours. There's photos of people cracking out on video games until like 6 a.m. My favorite of which, I think Sherry Jennings tweeted out and was like, we're still in here at 6 a.m. playing. And it's like Problem X versus uh, Yipes. And Problem X is like seriously sitting there with his eyes closed. He's that. just like... He, like, look, he looks actually asleep. Yeah, I, it probably caught him blinking, but the <laughs> right, picture yeah. was just funny with the context. Yeah. I thought that was amazing. So Yeah, yeah. By all accounts, fantastic. Uh, sad we didn't get to go as oh, see a previous conversation, but, oh, you know, that happened, so. So painful, because yeah. there was just the ST uh, look, and the Look, I, I haven't stage. gotten back to everything, I don't know about you, but uh-huh. I have started a plan of watching all the things that happened at Combo Breaker, and so far, I've seen SF5, and oh, I've seen nice. Injustice, okay. and I definitely want to check out Tekken, because I heard it was super Dang, great. I don't know how you find the time for all this, Yeah, like, I just, I mean, like, eating breakfast or something. But th- that's like three hours of matches, right? Like, yeah, and then like, I eat lunch, and I don't know, it's not that God, hard. I'm, so hard. I brush, I wash up in the morning and at night, like, I think there's plenty of time in life. Um, so, I, I just gotta start watching them while I'm streaming, so people are watching me watch it. Know, it's dude, not that hard seriously. to find time for that stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I definitely am going to check out other games as well. Yeah, so. people were saying KI was hype. As yeah, well. KI's yeah, on the list, dude. of course. I saw the Dayton J come back, uh-huh. but even though he didn't win the set, uh-huh. but it was like ridiculous. And oh, Definitely going to check that out. I heard a lot of good things about the whole topic. Yeah. All right, let's go through the results. Check them right. out. Okay, Street Fighter Five, obviously big premiere event, but of course not everybody could be there, but significant in that, like in the top 16, which was all played out on Sunday. The entire top half of that bracket was all U.S. players. Now, obviously, a lot of the Asian players couldn't make it because a lot of them were at Red Bull Kumite and such like that. But that's still super impressive because Mm -hmm. let's just go through the top 16. You'll see a lot of those players that are in the bottom half are really strong Asian players, right? So 13th place, NL from uh, Korea with Kami. Uh, Rise, Mena RD with Birdie. Uh, Ubiken's Daikoku uh, go with Birdie and NS Man. Ludovic with Chun Li and Colleen. USA. Mm-hmm. Ninth place was NS Joel with Ryu. USA. And you know to 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 talk about him a little bit, he actually says that he hates Ryu right now. <laughs> totally wants to quit the character. He's been practicing Akuma. He just didn't oh, think okay. it was ready for Combo oh, okay, Breaker. Okay, okay, okay. Somehow he got ninth place here, though. Okay. So, you know, and you know what? He is getting buffed. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, man. Ninth place, also Cyclops Goichi with Chun Li. Ninth place, Mago with Karin and Rashid, uh, which was a surprise. He busted out Rashid in a counter pick match. Uh, ninth place, also Cyclops Dogura with Urien. Sweet. Man, I feel like Dogura is always just outside of these things. Yeah, I know, right? right? Isn't name like always ninth place? It feels like In it. In SF5? Just yeah. Just spending too much time winning Guilty Gear, I know. basically, God, right? Uh, seventh place, EG NY Chris G with Guile. <laughs> Poor Chris G, man. Like, that sucked. Someone made the joke that he is the most approachable person in the fighting game community, apparently, because, you know... So while he was playing against Sako, I don't know if folks saw this, some guy walked up onto the stage. It was... Chris was up 2-0. Sako came all the way back to tie it at 2-2. Then Sako won a round, and, s- and then somebody popped up onto the stage. And told Chris not to sweat it and, like, be calm. In the middle of the match. Like, yeah. people watching were like, oh, is Chris G claiming controller malfunction? What's going on? Because you just stopped playing. Yeah. Literally, a dude ran up there onto the stage. And according to people who have talked to him, the guy was like, he didn't think he did anything wrong. Like, literally hey. didn't think. He got kicked out of the venue. Sure. Uh, he had to get put in combo breaker jail at the back of the venue until his friend came to pick him up. Sure. But it was just like... I don't know, man. It's That's... <sighs> That's not just a, like, tournament rules thing that you would learn about. Uh-huh. Just, like, through the osmosis of culture, you know? But that's a person thing. <laughs> like, the... Chris didn't even know him. It's oh, not like yeah. the guy was, like, jumping like... Even if I, like, me, I know Chris. I'm not, like, his best friend. But, like, I know uh-huh. Chris. I would never do that. Right. Uh-huh. No, would any of... It, nobody would do that. Like, it doesn't matter how well you know yeah. Chris. Nobody's jumping up onto the stage. In fact, if you know Chris, you're probably uh-huh. less likely to do that. Right. 
You'd, you'd probably more likely not do that. Someone joked that it was an e-league stooge just to, you know, promote the, the concept of security, you know? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, but, I mean, the thing about it was, I mean, they did have security. Like, Hell Pockets, I think it was, or Gibby. I think it was Gibby. It was just like... I should have did a better job. Like, I should have noticed him coming up to the stage. So I'm sure he Hard was... Hard to expect that. Yeah, but that was really, really strange. But yeah, I mean, people kept joking, like, you know, the spirit of Marvel at EVO showed up to Christian and was like, I challenge you. Yeah. But the spirit of Street Fighter came up and was like, stay calm. <laughs> you know, which perfectly exemplifies the oh, difference between yeah. Street Fighter and Marvel, you know. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, but yeah, Chris G, uh, seventh place. Also, seventh place, Splice F Champ, who had the most unfortunate uh, Balrog. Come on, come on, Ryan. Well, he ran into two Balrogs. I know. He lost to Smug on, and Brian F, dude. You know you can't play Dalsum in those matchups. You know, I know it. You I are know. You are aware of it. Come on, man. While I was watching that, the whole time I was just thinking, come on, come on Ryan. <laughs> What are you doing to yourself? Take another it's too much on the line. Take another ca- yeah, that's true. It's true. It really is. Uh, fifth place was also Hori Sako with Akuma and Chun Li. Mm, the Chun uh, was good actually. Yeah, his Chun Li is super good. And uh, also uh, Fox J Wong with Karim. It's funny because the top eight, I man, I managed to watch a lot of the top sixteen. And I was falling asleep during top eight, so I kind of watched like the first half of okay. top eight a little bit. Yeah, I, so. I saw the rest of it. Uh, today. Oh, uh, okay, so I, okay. I'm now caught up. Because I, I was in uh, France, obviously, and the time difference As we will crazy. get to. Fourth place, according to Shoryuken.com, is Brain F. <laughs> really? Uh, that's yeah, funny. That no, actually is a great name. Yeah, I know, right? Brain F. <laughs> Brain F. <laughs> God, that's perfect. That's actually. a really good name. You should Especially just, just for go by Brain F. What he does do as a poet. Right, exactly. You know, it's a perfect description uh-huh. now, right? So, um... Fourth place, Brian F. with Balrog. <laughs> I'm still out of that name. That's genius. I know. We need to talk to him yeah. about that. We yeah. Because he even said that he couldn't come up with a nickname and Brian F. was kind of like, uh, like such a simple name. And, yeah. you know, so we got to talk to him. Anyways. Third place, Pi Smug with Balrog. So Balrog in three and fourth place. By the way, Brian F. getting fourth place. Cue all the, all the people saying that Balrog is carrying people. Like, they don't realize how good Brian Ashley is. He seems really like a is. very strong player. Yeah. Uh, but I've definitely it. seen some people on Twitter already crying about that. So. He beat Chris G. Yeah, I know. He's a good player. Oh, come on, man. He's a good player. You know, you, like, you don't get fourth. Does, I don't care what character it is. I don't care if he's playing Ivan Ooze. He's not going to get fourth place against that competition unless he's, like, pretty good already. Well, with Ivan Ooze, maybe. Maybe with Ivan Ooze. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> second place. CYG, BST, Snake Eyes with Zangief and Akuma, and shockingly, Zangief a lot more this yeah. time. And um, I'm super happy to see oh, him back too. up there. I mean, it's it's now consistent for a few events in a row now that he is slowly getting yeah. himself back into that position. Right, isn't it three? It's either three out of the last four or four in a row tournaments where he's made top eight, and each time it's been a higher placement. Yeah, uh-huh. So... Uh-huh. Clearly, he's on the up and up, and he's already Yeah, and some above. of those come back. Now, obviously, uh, Knuckle Dew had a really crucial drop on a flash kick to get himself into loser's bracket. I don't know if I spoiled that. No, no, I watched already. it. Yeah. yeah, so, but, um, uh, oh, that's right, you watched the whole thing already. But, uh, dude, I mean, you can't say, oh, Snake Eyes got lucky because he's in winner's finals. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, first place, Liquid Knuckle Dew with Armika and Guile, and... You know, he talked about it on Twitter. We obviously all know his, you know, his emotion struggles and stuff. And he said after Iwi, he was really down and, like, was wondering, you know, if he just was losing it. And then he said that this win meant a lot for him to, to come back and gain this win. It, was, it helped him with his confidence. Now, you know, my personal worry is that, you know, you're not going to stay on top forever. No. no matter what. So yeah. it's going to happen at some point in time. Someone, I mean, even right now with Punk on like the rise, right? So, yeah. But uh, Knuckle Doom takes it, so good job to him. He's still one of the best. Yeah, he definitely looks very good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, GTO Akira says Top 8, West Coast Warzone, Texas Showdown, and now Combo Breaker for yeah, Snake, Snake Eyes. Eyes. Uh-huh. He also mentioned that Dobra got ninth three tournaments in a row. Right? I, I feel like I always... You said, yeah. Uh, <sighs> Poor dude. Yeah. Uh, Snake's geef, I feel like, excellent spacing reads and all that stuff. I feel like it's like not 
as technical as it could be? No, no. I still don't think it's as, as Zangief as like stupendous. Yeah, I don't you know feel like I mean? it's an optimized yeah. Zangief at all. So yeah. that that shows to me that he has quite a bit still to get better at. But I mean, it's I don't know if Which that's necessarily time. Snake's forte. You know what I mean? Like I feel like he will be better off kind of winning through that emotional because you know how we used to always talk about how he had great footsies like a Daigo that he was yeah. unlike the new players yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think that's kind of to his strength that's where his strength is that he is the Justin Wong, Alex Valle uh, Daigo mind kind of player sure. as opposed to the crazy technical guy yeah, option select V skill is pretty good <laughs> just saying true, true alrighty SF5 happened. Uh, Injustice 2, the first big major, first entry into their Injustice Pro Tour. And uh, tied for seventh place was Panda Globo's Hayate with Robin and Batman. Dude, it's all the same people who played Mortal Kombat X. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Seventh place was KN KDZ with Aquaman and Superman. Everyone played two characters or something. Uh, fifth place was CR Biohazard with Harlequin and Bane. As well as Noble Dragons with Poison Ivy and Aquaman. Fourth place, Circa Forever King. Batman and Black... Excuse me. Batman and Black Adam. Third place, Yomi Slayer, Aquaman, and Black Adam. Second place, Nasser Tekken Master with Atrocitus. All the way from Bahrain. And first place, Echo Fox, Sonic Fox with Deadshot and Black Adam. Yeah, some of those guys use more characters than that, actually, but that's, yeah. that's fine. But Black Adam seems to be the standout here yeah, right look, now. It's it's week two when this happened. Uh -huh. uh, and clearly Black Adam is a good character. He's never going to be bad. He's very good. He's basically the same character as before, mm -hmm. except probably better. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I remember he was super good when Injustice first came out. They nerfed him. They did. It feels like he's back to super good status. Yeah, and in fact, he might be better than that character. Really? Uh, yeah, he might be. I mean, I feel like a lot of the cast is better than they were in that initial Injustice launch. So, um, yeah, he's super good. So, not surprising to see him all over the place. Not surprising to see Aquaman all over the place. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that stuff's going to last. I mean, we can talk about this maybe some other time, but I feel like that's probably not going to be how the game ends up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and in fact, just early and easy and obvious. I mean, everyone sat there and complained about Deadshot. Complained yeah, about Deadshot, dude. right? I mean, it's like when people complain about Mika, right? Who was meeting with Mika? Evo Champion Fudo. Right. One of the greatest knuckle do. Evo Champion Luffy, right? And if you look at this top 16, I don't know if they just didn't list it, but nobody played Deadshot except for Sonic Fox. That's all I saw. Yeah, so, I mean, okay, so Sonic Fox wins with Deadshot. Yeah. Sorry, the best player won with the best character? No, probably not the best yeah, character. Yeah, I know, exactly. So. Uh, although, also, obviously, a good character and will never be bad, but best character? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not sure. So. I'm not convinced. Can right we now, talk so. about Tekken Master and just how crazy <laughs> he I. I don't get it. I, look, there are some other people playing Injustice in mm -hmm. the Middle East. He's not the only guy. But the entire scene in like the whole region mm -hmm. is like a dozen people. And nobody approaches his level. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he travels, so I feel like he probably gets a lot of competition when he travels. But still, that uh, he's so secluded. And he goes 5,000 miles away to like the nearest right. strong scene. It's the only way to beat him Nice is, work, man. I mean, what can you say? Only way to beat him is to send the cavalry into Bahrain. Ah, reference that you would not understand. That's true. I don't. I'm wondering if anybody would understand that reference. I'm sure somebody in the chat watches the show anyway. I don't think you can send a cavalry into the into Bahrain. No. Unless it's one person. Oh, no, no. I mean more for geographical concerns. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I'd have to <laughs> airlift him or uh, have a... It's not, even that, it's not even that much of a... Yeah, okay, thank you. Someone got it. So thank you, Ch Chin Dog understands. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Geography noobs. Uh, um, yeah, dude, he is super sick. He won MK. I don't know if that's going to be on this list, but he won MKX also. <laughs> I mean, hey. someone joked like, this is what happens when you play games with good net code. Yeah, I, that probably does help. That probably does help. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so. yeah. But he's just a super strong player. And yeah. He, and his decision-making... In some cases, his decision making I felt was like two months into the game rather than two weeks. Because uh -huh, uh -huh. there were some times when he did a combo and a launch, and he did, and he seemingly dropped the combo, but he probably was looking for them to air tech. Oh, and so right. I feel like I feel like he's like already like you're gonna air tech. <laughs> like he's like there already. Nobody else is even there. Not even Sonic Fox was doing that stuff. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. 
you know, nice work. Nice uh, work. But also, you know, shout outs to SoCal, you know, from SoCal boy Slayer in third place. So great job to him. It was it was a really good top eight. Um, I'm happy for Biohazard doing work with the classic grappler zoner combo. <laughs> Man after my own heart, uh, oh, yeah. looking good over there, and then uh, yeah, there's I some... need to, I need to watch this because I need to catch like the Harlequin and yeah. did anyone play Catwoman? Only Star Charger, huh? yeah. But Star Charger did some good stuff. Yeah. Newbie Cheetah was super awesome actually. He um, had know. a great match versus Biohazard. Okay, okay. A lot, a lot of good stuff to watch on there. Okay, we'll see. Cool. Sad to see no Flash up here. Ugh, man. Anyways, uh, Guilty Gear Rev Two. Uh, top seven again. Tons of people entered. This is the third highest uh, yeah. entrance. Seventh place, Fu with Kum Hyun, and seventh place, uh, Fable Kizzy K with Sin Kisuke, and uh, those are the two SoCal boys right there. Oh, right. Uh, then fifth place, Elven Shadow with Faust, of course, and uh, PG Marlin Pie with Zato One. Did you see the video of him playing like uh, Scott Joplin on the piano? As soon as I saw that, I was like. Well, there we go. Another musician who's yeah. excellent at execution. Yeah. Everything fell into place at that point in time. Fourth place, <laughs> BXA.Nova with Jacko, who uh, I also was reading some tweets from Marlon Pie talking about how much he hates I that saw character. that too, yeah. <laughs> uh, Cat Pie on, or is it supposed to be Caption? I don't know what it's supposed to be. It could be a typo, but Damon Doe uh, from NorCal Slayer. She's just yeah, been, that's so sick. He's been <laughs> killing it. Second place, also Excel Born Bjorn, son of bear, or a murder of bears, as he's also known mm -hmm. by with chips enough. I mean, those two guys, I feel like maybe the best. I, it's so weird because, like, I thought maybe Kid Viper and Kizzy K were the best, uh -huh. but Damon Doe and Bears just hasn't been traveling as much, and like. When they're in the tournaments, they second and third. Sick. And who do they lose to? Dogura. Dogura first place with Raven. So uh, what a shock. What a shock. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Good job, uh, Dogura. I guess Kid Viper didn't make it to this event because I don't ah. see him in here. So maybe he might have done better. Okay. But uh, like Hamad got ninth place. Nice work such. Hamad. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Decline was there in 13th. Nice. Killer Instinct. Uh, again, I guess uh, it was. I guess the the, the, the the MVP of this turn of the top eight was Wheels, who was previously known as Dayton J. I don't know why he changed his nickname. Cause Wheels is the sickest name. Yeah. Okay. You don't like Wheels? Um, I'm thinking Wheels is cool. Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, is Dayton J actually like his real name, or what was that before? I don't remember you know, name, to be honest. Uh, well, anyway, seventh place was Young Tate with Maya, uh, and and uh, Julio with Riptor. Fifth place, Circa Nikki with Mira and UA Bass with Spinal. Fourth place, XL Thompson with Jago. Now, keep in mind, up to this point, there hasn't been a character repeat at all. Right, right yeah, yeah. And then third place is XL Amenti, and this is where repeat jumps in. But that's because he plays Shin Hisako, Gargos, Maya, Jago, and Mira. And it's yeah. only Jago and Mira. Yeah. The other three are still unique. And then in second place was UA Wheels with Gargos, Saberwolf, and Tusk. Saberwolf and Tusk not being repeats. Yeah. And first place was HW Valorax with Cinder, not a repeat. Look, it's a good game, man. Dude, the, the balance <laughs> is pretty ridiculous. Yeah. This was. This was. Oh, there. his real name is Dayton Jones. Ah, so okay. He, okay. So Duly noted. Go. By the way, also in chat, people are saying Kid Viper was there and Hamad beat him. <gasps> <laughs> no. Kid Viper might not even be the best in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Yeah, uh, oh that's man. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is their Evo because they're not. Yeah. They're not at Evo. Yeah. So mm -hmm. all the, all the folks came out and Valorax is from the UK. Uh, international oh, player right here. Yeah. You know. Okay. That's right. Okay. That's right. Uh, wow. I'm really, so I'm really happy for Wheels. They did so well at a competition like this. Yeah. Yeah. My man Tusk. Up there, I don't know how much work Tusk did because I haven't gotten to see the top right. eight yet. But uh -huh. uh, or well, you know what else happened? See, so how come like UK rule, rules like all the other games, right? Like Foxy Grandpa at one point in time. And, you know, He's like, good. Uh, have, I think the better question is, how come internationals did better in Injustice and Killer Instinct than they did in Street Fighter Five? <laughs> wow. Street Fighter V really is U.S.'s game at this Street point. Street Fighter V is more America's game than Injustice and Killer Instinct are. Literally American games. 
All right, Canadians were doing better in Injustice. Uh, I forget. Go back up to the Injustice thing. There was it just Canadians? Let me see. Uh, let's see. Who's doing work here? Yeah, a couple of Canadians in that top eight. Oh, and of course Bahrain. So yeah. uh, in, international <laughs> folks doing well, and then you got the UK winning KI. Mm -hmm. Whereas in SF5 there was but one non-American, non-US player in the top eight, and he didn't get first. Um, no, he didn't. No, it's he crazy, didn't. dude. It's crazy. Bam. Marvel vs. Capcom 3. This one has stayed pretty close to the country at yeah, this point. So <laughs> yeah. Seventh place was NBADC, Static Alpha, and Unknown. Uh, fifth place was Joey D and Flux. Fourth place, Panda was Ray Ray. Third place, Circa Jabril. Second place, uh, straight off of his great performance at the, at the Danger Room, mm -hmm. uh, Not Enough Damage. Uh, and then first place, though I heard it was kind of free for him, e.g. Oh, really? New York Chris G. Okay. Yeah, so Chris G's still one of the best at this game. Man, I just, you know what I hope, and might not happen at this point, but Unknown has been getting top eights for the entirety of the game's lifespan, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. Top fours, oftentimes, top eights, like, all the time. Mm -hmm. I just don't, I don't know he's ever going to get that, that, that big major W, you know? That so, sucks because he's been so, so consistent. So the time he'll place first is unknown. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But yeah, Christy too good, too good at that game. Blaze Blue Central Fiction seventh place was Koopa Claus with Izanami and Beautiful Dude with Relius. I didn't know Beautiful Dude was uh, at that level in Blaze Blue. Uh, fifth place Havoc Noah with nine and four eight two Master Steph with nine. Uh, fourth place, uh, The Arm with Rachel. Third place, Nakio with Tsubaki. Second place, Cyclops Dogura with okay. Azriel. And okay. first place, okay. All right. Panda Global's Super Kawaii Desu okay. with Izayoi. Yeah, and I heard he actually landed an astral finish on him in tournaments. Too. Sick. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, good job to SKD. Uh, King of Fighters, 14. Fourth place was Stray Wolf. Uh, well, actually, let me do top eight because uh, seventh place was Donka. Donka was in there, right. and uh, so was Mario E. Fifth place was Kusanagi uh, and Deshimo. I'm assuming Kus that's the same Kusanagi from, from Mexico, Latin America area. Because he played sure. on all the CPT events. I remember the right? name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, third place, Le Leic. Uh, second place was, uh, I guess they're both from Vegas, actually. Vegas KOF Leic, Vegas KOF El Rosa. And I guess that kind of makes sense because that's where uh, 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 Romance moved to, to Vegas. It's true, right? he did. But first place, Arcade Shock, Reynold. And nice Reynold work. actually sent out a tweet afterwards that he felt like that U.S. could be really strong in this game, that he feels like he oh, yeah. was really strong in the game. Okay, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Curly W says it is. Presumably that means that it is the same player. Okay, yeah, it is. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So BG Callisto also said, yeah, that's Mexico's Kusanagi. Cool, so, uh, Smash Wii U, uh, fourth place was T.Y.E. Roy uh, with Bayonetta and Marth. Uh, third place, Ned with Cloud. Uh, second place was John Numbers with Wii Fit Trainer. And first place was Esam with Samus. What? Is Wii Fit Trainer good in that game? I mean, I don't think a lot of the stronger players were here. Okay, let's just but, put it that all right, way, fair, so. enough, fair enough. Um, uh, as an aside... I played somebody on Injustice this morning who was zoning with Aquaman named Da Buzz. And I was thinking, hmm. Really? Hmm. Really? Is that. It was actually pretty good. Interesting. Pretty good Interesting. indeed. Interesting. Okay, okay. Uh, Smash Melee. Fourth place was Ginger with Falco. Third place was Prince Abu. That's kind of. Anyways, Jigglypuff. KJH with Fox, and first place was Duck with Samus. So Samus won both of the Smash tournaments. Yeah, I know. Uh, Super Turbo, seventh place, Muffin Man. All right, he did DJ. work this weekend. Yeah, and Jiggly Norris with Fei Long. Fifth place was the Archvillain with M. Bison and Climax with Balrog. Fourth place, Ultra Combo, who won NCR. Yeah, he's uh, a very with good player. Old Sagat. Uh, third was Lord Jimmy Bones with Balrog. Second place, Roy Bissell with Old Sagat, Dalsam, and Balrog. And first place, Damn Die with Old Ryu. Some of those names bring me back, man. Yeah, no shocks there. No, no shocks there. Vampire Savior, seventh place, Xanoz. Good job to her for getting uh, seventh with Allbath. And uh, Kyle W. with Morrigan. 
Fifth place was see now now see Xanos has been trying to get me to play some Vampire Savior against her for the long time. She's a top eight finisher at Combo Break. Dude, this is not happening. You're gonna get you're no, gonna get, I'm washed, gonna get huh? mopped. I'm gonna get mopped. Uh, Yeti Ghetto Slaying with Sasquatch and J One the Skate with Sasquatch. Born. Fourth was Dine with Jedi. Cool. Third, I mean, it's Flo is listed as Sasquatch. But he should be. He's really a lot of a victor. Yeah, that's stuff. what he says. But I mean, like, I think he said, like, in top 32 or something like that, uh, that, uh, like, every character was represented or okay, something cool. like that. So only if he counted himself as victor. Right. So, um, uh, VMP DR with uh, Lilith in second place. In first place, again, Mighty Mar hey. with Anacharis, who was the worst character in the game. Don't understand how that nice works. Nice job. Did I skip Tekken? Tekken is not listed no here. No Tekken. Right. Uh, okay. I'll find it. I'll find it. Uh, do, oh, no, do it's, there, it's, there, it's there. Okay, do you want to skip the mystery tournament? I don't even want to talk about this. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about the mystery tournament. So, Kazmer won it. Oh, God. Remember our guest who got the Ultra Chen bump? Kazmer? Who came on here to discuss his absurd Marvel Infinite list, his lineup, when it, when we were just absolutely... All right, Tekken could, 7 could results. not think of anything to say. Second place was Flo. That was really impressive. All right, Tekken 7 results. Let's go into Tekken 7 He results. actually texted me. Or he DM'd me on Twitter. And in fact, I, uh, I got it here. He, he, talking about Casimir, he wanted to come on the show. He says, yo, are you guys doing an Ultra Chen on Tuesday? And I say, most likely. He says... Can I come talk about CB next message and bring my trophy, lol? No. No, you can't. Boop. Second place was Flo, though. Not yeah. surprised there. Flo yeah. was easy. So. The funny thing is that, I mean, Flo is, he always seems to do well at that. Like, there are often repeat top eights in Mystery Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just oh, oh, and stuff. Exactly, exactly. I mean, that was one of the reasons why I liked going to Games Done Quick, because they had mystery tournaments there, too. Mm -hmm. And people had to play games that they never played before. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, because you're so good at video games, you start to understand the physics of the game right away. You understand how to take advantage of it. Yeah. It's just a really cool thing. So, there you go. Uh, Tekken 7. Seventh place, ITS Weapon X with Claudio, and ITS Cuddlecore with Alisa. Uh, fifth place was Echo Brawl Pro with King, and fifth place BXA Cody with Heihachi and Kazuya. And then, no, he did not change the resolution, and he did not blame that on Cody. Did not blame the resolution on what his happened? loss. After he lost his first game to uh, Tanukana, like uh, he went and changed the rev resolution on the in the game, and mm -hmm. then Kotaku put out an article. It was like player blames resolution on. And that's not exactly what happened. And it, yeah, there was a big stink drama. I just don't even need to talk about that. Uh, I, okay. Fourth place, ITS, Peeling with Xiao Yu. Third place, Cyclops Tanukana with Xiao Yu. Which I made the worst pun in the world on Twitter, by the way. I, was I really, saw it. I was happy about that. It because I got, I have equal parts. Come on, that you could do better. And that was amazing, James. Mm -hmm. so, Thanks, work. Uh, second place, Fox Echo Fox Saint with Jack7. And first place, Echo Fox JDCR with Heihachi and Dragonov. No surprise. Yeah. That, and uh, it looks like Echo Fox's uh, coup is paying off in that game. So. Well, by all yeah, accounts, a really good top eight. Definitely, Tanakana is like the fan favorite of everybody now. Yeah. So for makes sense. Good reason. So um, I'm really looking forward to that game coming out. Oh yes, in two days. The local mom and pop does not have it in yet. I was very sad. I called them up actually on the drive over to James's place. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, Skullgirls second encore also their Evo. Yes. So they had over a hundred entrants on there. Cloud uh, was seventh place, and Fuzzy Snugs in seventh place. Uh, fifth place was is a p is is I'm sure is that is a p and Swift Fox Dash. Uh, fourth was Outlaw Spike. Third place was Liam. Hold second on. place was, with Solo Valentine. Hey, second place was Wing Zero with Solo Philia. I heard Mike Z was like, I can't believe there's two solo players in top eight. Yo, wow! I gotta watch that. That's amazing. And first place, Echo Fox, Sonic Fox with Fuqua as well as Fuqua Double Philia. So I guess he had a solo Fuqua as well. Wow, there must have been like a big shift. Yeah, but it's funny because a lot of people are always like, oh, Sonic Fox, he could, wouldn't do well if he played Street Fighter. And, like he's the Whatever. best at like three completely different games. You know? 
Uh, Mortal Kombat XL, as you mentioned, uh, I'll do top eight because it's pretty impressive. Slayer in seventh place, yeah. Foxy Grandpa in seventh place, uh -huh. but he's probably dedicating more time to Injustice now. All these guys are. Yeah, fifth place is Echo Fox Scar and NS uh, DJT. Fourth place, BXA Forever King Jr. Uh, third place, Echo Fox Sonic Fox in third place. Second place was Method Sil Silver Ride. Mm -hmm. And first place, as you mentioned earlier, Nasser's Tekken Master. That's really good. I didn't realize that uh, Silver Ride got in second. Congrats to him. But if you if you look at those names, almost all those players got top 12 to 16 in Injustice. Injustice. Yeah. There's like a core of like maybe, in my view, like maybe 10 to 15 people in Injustice in NRS games who are like the guys, mm -hmm. more or less. Agreed. Um, but man, Foxy Grandpa was not one of them. He got top 8 here and he did not get top 16 in, uh, in Injustice. Yeah, so. I know. I guess he... Uh... Little, I'm sure he'll bounce off back. Day, off yeah, day. he's a yeah. great player. So. Soul Calibur 2. And also, just keep in mind, Combo Breaker had like 700 games. So you Yeah. Know. Uh, top eight, uh, top four in Soul Calibur 2 was P.O.B. Isam with Voldo. Mr. T was in third with Talum. Uh, second place, J.P.C. with Xianghua. And first place, Money Muffins with Assassin and Sofitia. Where's Flo? Why is Flo not in this top eight? I mean, isn't he like the best at Soul Calibur? I already got busted. Did he? I already got dunked. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Capcom versus SNK2. Very interesting results here. I like this one. Seventh place, Olive Garden. That's, that's Olive pretty, Garden. That's pretty great. Okay. With S S S, S Groove, Blanca, Honda, Athena. What? What Seventh is an place? S Honda? I don't even know what that would look like. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> Nagata Lock. With uh, uh, seventh place with C Groove, Guile, Kim Vega. Fifth place, CEO, Jabaley. With K Groove, Kami Hibiki, Blanca, or Sagat, Kami Blanca. Fifth place, Renegade. With uh, N Groove, Iori, Chun Li. Oh, he just had like three. Let's teams. go, Robin. Fourth place, EG, New York, Chris G. With uh, N Groove, uh, Iori, Kim Ryu, or Iori, Terry Ryu. Dude, he still has team roll in the uppercut, dude. I mean, is that how he's winning? Chris? Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, he definitely is doing some janky stuff, but, you know, he's a good player, so. Third place, EBT Muffin Man with K. Bison, Sagat oh, Kami, K. Bison, eh, lots of teams. And uh, second place, Echo Fox, Justin Wong. That's right. With C. Groove, Vega, Chun-Li, Sagat. And first place, D44 Boss, Boss of this, uh, A. Groove, Vega, Bison, and Blanca. Now... Boss obviously has just been coming to every tournament that has CBS too, so he can fund free trips to US. Right. Because he basically just wins the airplane fare, right? right? Not, not getting rich on CBS yeah, too. But he's just coming to hang out and to play, of course. basically. He has dominated every tournament, he has blown up everybody, but in this tournament, Justin Wong sent him to losers in the winner's fight of the brackets. I, I read that that was the first set he lost in CBS two in the US. Since John Choi did it in Evo like eight years ago, <laughs> I would not be surprised. But of course, he ended up coming winning back the and thing. winning the whole thing. So. But I mean, apparently, everyone said that was cool because it was super hype. Like, I watched like, it. I mean, I was oh, okay, okay. So what? We were in France. I had bizarre sleeping hours, so I happened to wake up just as this was happening, and I saw oh, the top four. Oh, that's right. I saw you tweeting about it. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. and it was really good to watch for oh, sure. Man. But yeah, shout out to Justin Wong, still with the skill level to send Boss into losers. You know what's funny is that you could really see that he wasn't on top of it. Like he he missed some little combos here, uh -huh. and like he he wasn't doing like the ideal Chun combos. He was definitely uh -huh. doing like janky stuff, uh, and he could have killed rounds uh, if he had just like canceled, you know, level two into something else than what he did. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, and same thing with Sagat. So like he wasn't playing at maximum Justin, whereas I'm sure Boss, you know, Boss is still playing the game regularly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All I'm saying is, we might have had a USA taking CVS 2 if Justin had practiced more. <laughs> Probably not. But, I mean, like, there's all those people who are always like, man, CVS 2 is the greatest game, blah, 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 because of all that nostalgic glasses yeah. and stuff like that. But, God, like, you watch enough of A. Groove Vega from Justin, and you will want to rip your hair out, <laughs> Dude, basically. The, they both had Point Vega, right? And that matchup is a grind. People don't remember how much of a turtle game this could, the CVS two could be, yep. depending on the right characters. Oh man, God, <laughs> Vega in that game was. I mean, look, Eddie Lee played that character. It's all you need to know. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All you need to know. Oh man. 
Uh, but yeah, that's right. the last game that was listed there. And yeah, so Combo Breaker naturally going to take like 45 minutes to talk about. It. Sure. Uh, do you want to go through the other results too? Uh, and then take a break? Or sure, that's, that's fine. Okay. Let's talk about... Uh, let's talk about E-League. You got it. E-League, obviously the finals were this week. Uh, basically, 8 through 4... Well, 8 through 5, I guess you can call it. 8 through 4 was played on Twitch, and then the top yeah. 4 was played on TBS, on TV. Mm-hmm. And uh, some interesting stuff happening there as well. Uh, but do they not actually... No, the results are right there. Right there. Is in that this? picture. Oh, this is... The, okay, yeah. okay. It's a graphical picture. Mm-hmm. Um, graphical picture. Graphical picture. Okay. Seventh place. Tied for seventh place was Momochi and Xiaohai. Mm-hmm. Momochi... Uh, no, I'm sorry. Daigo and uh, Wolf Chrome. That's what it is. They're grayed out. They're grayed out. Yes. Momochi beat Daigo and Xiaohai beat Wolf Chrome. And so uh, Daigo and Wolf Chrome both go out in seventh place. Yeah, Wolf Chrome had played really, really well, but that that time I would not say was the best I've seen him play, unfortunately. No, you could tell the nerves were getting to yeah. him. Yeah, you could. I mean, that's what people have said is his biggest weakness is that when he's the one with the pressure, he he struggles, which is why he didn't do well against K. Brad at final round. Right, a lot of people are like, you can't be the heel if you can't back it up, and I feel like that kind of I see caught him again. Uh, then tied for fifth place was Momochi and Xiaohai. Fudo beating Momochi and PRog beating Xiaohai. Uh, fourth place was PRog. Mm-hmm. He lost to Fudo. Yeah. That's super. So everyone was talking about how that was probably an option select. That's what I thought. That uh, he was that he caught the, the, the V-reversal with. So if you didn't see, at the end of the round... Last, you know, to kill, Fudo did jump in short super, and Eduardo had done a V reversal against the short, so he was caught by the super, basically. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, Alun even went and put out a video afterwards, like, here's my option select, I can do it too. Yeah. Then we talked to PR Rock, and he's like, I talked to Fudo, and that was not an option select. Nope. In fact, <laughs> it wasn't even a call out. It was actually an accident that worked out for him. Really? Because he said that Fudo just was doing jump light kick and he was just going to raw super because he thought Balrog, PR Balrog was going to counter with a standing light kick. He oh. was just going for the call out after the jump light kick. So he, he, he meant to do super. Though. Yeah, he meant okay, to do okay, super. Okay. He meant to do super, okay. but he wasn't trying to catch the V reversal. He I was just see. doing jump light kick and the, v, the, the super to catch a back dash or the standing light kick I or something. See. And the V-reversal came out, and it just worked out for Fudo. So. <laughs> well, okay, so I guess that would catch V-reversal or short or backdash, right? Yeah. Like any of those, uh-huh. I guess. So, okay, I guess it was an option select then. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but oh, that's dang. what, what PR Barak told us. That's what he told us. And kind of goes along with, like, Fudo was one of the greatest players, but he's also kind of a maniac in his own way. He can be. And uh, what he said, what PR Rog said is that Fudo tell, told him that he uses the super like a one-time uppercut. So he uses it to beat moves in times that you would do Ume Shoryu's. That's why he lands wow. it in crazy situations like that. Because it's like, well, this is where I would do an Ume uppercut if I had an uppercut. So right. let's just do the super. <laughs> Interesting. Go. Okay. I mean, super might be backdash if it actually lasts long enough. I'm not uh, sure. Yeah, Ryan, I thought that if, if you backdash against her super that she still gets you anyway. I'm not sure she runs into you. It should have enough active frames, I would I think, imagine, but yeah. I'm not sure. I feel like that's happened to me before. But, if not, let me know. Yeah, Fudo did win, and then Fudo lost to Punk in Losers, which meant Punk got sent to Losers. And he got sent to Losers by Mr. Phenom, yes. who played fantastic in the winner's bracket. In fact, he, he knocked Punk into Losers 3-1. to one. Yeah, yeah, that like never happens. Mm-hmm. And then Punk was able to beat Fudo 3-2, to two, was very close. Yeah. Uh, but dude, Punk, God, the way he hit confirms crouching medium kick is stupid. Although, talking to other players like Pia Rog, he was actually saying that, he's like, I can't confirm crouching medium kick into Tenko, but apparently it's easier on pad. That's what he said. Because the short, it's a shorter distance to go do the fireball from down back. It's just like, kick, you can just do it said. faster. So, And Pia Rog even joked after Red Bull Kumite, he's like, I'm going to become a pad warrior. I don't know if it's serious or not, but that's what he said. But uh, then he did tell us that though. Grand finals, 
was Punk versus Phenom. Now, yeah. of course, there is a little controversy here. Yeah. Because they did not do the standard tournament, fighting game tournament rule in which you now have to eliminate Phenom twice, coming from Loser's Bracket. Instead, yeah. they changed it from a best of five to a best of seven and gave Phenom one free game. <laughs> one free game. <laughs> so, unfortunately, uh, Punk ended up taking that four to two. Yeah. But in normal circumstances, that would have been three to one, and then Punk would have won one more game, and it would have been one zero at that time. Phenom would have had more opportunity to play had it been a standard format. Now, obviously, people are going to talk about this and be like, "This is garbage." One, the rule was announced a long time ago. We just didn't pay attention to it, right? Yeah, that's definitely true. It was. Plus, another thing too is it was supposed to be single elimination and all these things like that. And Originally, were, it was supposed yeah. to be single. And they convinced them not to do that. And then obviously there's the TV time problem, right? You have to worry about TV and the resetting of the bracket can change the time uh, that true. you need a lot I mean, drastically. And, and uh, I spoke with Z, who then came to Rebel Kumite. Mm -hmm. And he said that, you know, there's an FCC issue where if it goes into the next hour, mm -hmm. you're like in the next hour, then that, for ratings purposes, is considered another hour. So you want to make sure that you fill up every hour that you do stuff in, because if not, if you go one second into the next hour, then your ratings is basically halved. Gotcha. Think about it, right? Because gotcha. it's two hours. Yeah. So uh -huh. that, that, apparently that was some consideration for the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, E-League as a tournament and as a production was awesome. Yeah. Okay. Did you see the giant lifelike figures in the stages and in, in the studios? And I everything? did. That was crazy. That was sick, dude. Augmented reality. Yeah, uh -huh. that was sick. That was that sick. was amazing. Um, I was. Uh, I love that. They had a lot of stuff like that, and yet, very rarely uh, did they do anything where the tournament would like get overshadowed by the production mm -hmm. by the show. Right. Mm -hmm. I felt like they they combined the two really really well. Right. And like you said, originally it was supposed to have been single elimination, but then they took, you know, the in input from the commentators at the FGC mm -hmm, folks that they got, mm -hmm. and they just changed the, the rules, which is great. That's what they should do, and they and they did. So props to them for that. So I was disappointed that at the biggest moment, <laughs> grand finals, they they did give in to show over right. tournament. So that was a bummer for me, but again, everything else about it was was awesome. Right. Really hope that there's a second season of that. Yeah. Um... The other thing, too, is that it sucks because of the fewer games that Phenom had to go out the way that he did. Oh, poor Phenom. Missing Stomp the combo. into Super came out as Uppercut. Yeah. Uppercut missed. Quick rise from Punk. Punk killed him. The Super from Nikali might not have even killed. Like, it might have been enough have. to drink, cutting down to, like, a pixel. Like, yeah. it might have just been perfect like that. But it's still just an unfortunate way to go, and that's how he had to end it. That's literally Ooh. how he had to end it, and that's rough. Dude. That was that's rough. It, it's that's crappy. If if that happened to me versus you for a penny, I would be mad at myself. Yeah, uh -huh. but that happened like on television for uh, like a hundred thousand extra dollars. Uh, so that sucks. You yeah. Know? No, say so some people are saying he didn't try super. That's a legit I can tell you, he combo, did try super. But I, t yeah, we talked to him after at Red Bull Kumite. Yes, he tried super. He tried super, and that's just the way it happens sometimes. Can so. confirm. Yeah. Hmm. He did get a decent amount of money, but that's like a that's like a sixty thousand dollar drop right there, right? Yeah. Even more than that, I believe. I think, it's, well, I think they have the numbers there. Oh, do they? Uh, they did when I was looking earlier. Maybe not. No. Uh, See okay. Yeah, I think it was like 110 to 60 or something like that. But, Ugh, God. Um, in any case, it was a $110,000 drop? No, no, no. No, no I don't think it First was. place was 110000 That's what I, I thought. Think. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. 110 to, oh, okay, 110 to 40K. Okay, so it was a 70K drop. 70K drop. Yeah. Big old bummer right there. That's, that's for sure. But then we saw him in France. I mean, and some people spirits, are making so. the joke about, oh, you know... Oh, let me cry about my 40 grand. Dude, look, I'm going to tell you this right now. 40 grand is great, especially for playing video games. 40 grand can't even buy you, like, a nice car. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 40 I mean, grand is not as much as people think it is. Yeah, you yeah, know? like, you're, it's going to be tough to live a full year in Norway on that. I'll tell you that mm -hmm. much. That country exactly. is super expensive. Oh, first place was 150? So it was a 110K drop. Oh. 
Dang, they front loaded that a lot. That's a butt. That they front loaded that a lot. Dang. That's crazy, dude. Everybody would like to have an extra forty K. It's just don't think of it like it's a free forty K. Think about it like what if your job was like you have a chance to win your money <laughs> at the end of the month? Right. There's like five chances in the year where you could like, hey, maybe you got rent or not. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's a tough yeah. life. Yeah, 40K is definitely nice, especially for playing video games. You know, it's not sure. something we could have imagined three years ago. Oh, yeah, even so, three years you ago. Know, it's good. It's good for sure. But, man, dang, that's a big drop between first and second. I didn't realize it was that large. That, that's kind of unfortunate. So, But uh, good job to Punk, dude. That guy is the best in the world right now. I mean, yes, I just don't agreed. think there's anything to dispute about that at this point. I agree. Yeah, it's uh, again, Phenom was not distraught. We saw him in France, and he was in pretty good spirits. Yeah, he was in pretty good spirits. Yeah. I mean, he's sad, obviously. Oh, yeah, I mean, but, you yeah. know. But he's not, like, dead. Yeah. All right, and then one last event, the Red Bull Kumite, which is what we were at in hey. France. Uh, this was actually really nicely done. Oh, the, yeah. The, the venue, I mean, outside of the, the distinct lack of air conditioning or the underpowered air conditioning at the venue. Dude, um, you know what's hilarious? As you said, distinct. I, uh -huh. orig my brain was like, did he just say it stinks? <laughs> <laughs> was the stink. The stink? Because <laughs> it stunk. Oh! It was gnarly in there. So here's the thing about Paris, if you've never been there. And in many more places than that, because I was in the UK and it was the same way once. <sighs> People in those countries, it's not like living in the American Southwest, where we're used to like 100 plus degrees and you got to have air conditioning or else you die. But in those countries, it's not as common, because like, you're not expecting 90 degrees plus humidity all the time. Mm -hmm. But it was like 90 degrees, and humidity was very high, and nobody had air conditioning. Yes. Our hotel didn't have the air conditioning on. Most restaurants didn't have air conditioning on. Definitely, Sal Wagram, if they had air conditioning on, then it, they need to buy a fancier air conditioner, I'll tell you that much, because it was super hot in there. And even if you came in with deodorant, even if you had taken a shower that day, because I did both of those things, and I can tell you <laughs> that within just a few hours, you are gross. If you, if you saw us on the show afterward, I saw myself on that camera, uh -huh. and the nice shirt that I had brought... That where the thing was pressed, you know, the, the collar was, and I didn't iron it, but it was like nice looking, you know, and I saw it on there and it was just like this gross mess. It just was like distorted with sweat, you know, <laughs> and my face was just like pouring out gr gross water. It was horrible. Swamp ass the whole weekend. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh man, but uh, yeah, it was a rainforest down there. It was, uh, it was in, yeah, but the venue was still was cool. Like, the where the last chance tournament took place, they had a it was like more like the players were in the center and the audience was all around, just yeah. kind of like how it was in the top 16. Awesome, the, venue. Uh, yeah, a lot of really cool things. Yeah, and I they, mean, you know, jokes about the with all that stuff aside, it was awesomely yeah. run, very pretty area, and all that stuff. The two players who the qualified out of there got to go into the top 16. And everybody was always wondering, where's the brackets for this? But I forgot. They did this last year. They did it again this year. They draw their place in the bracket live at the event, which is super cool. I mean, just a lot of really cool, entertaining things like drawing the brackets, unlocking yeah. the locks one by yeah. one. So the last person who unlocks it gets the trophy. Yes. It's a lot of really cool production ideas. You know, like Red Bull and E-League obviously both have the funds to do things like that. But, I mean, it shows, like, lots of cool things that you oh, can do. Uh, and the event itself, the matches were ridiculous. Oh, like, yeah. I, I felt like this was much stronger than last year because last year was still kind of that infiltration domination That's train, right, yeah. right? And so this year was really, really cool. The matches were fantastic. Yeah, agreed. The matches were fantastic. So um, let's go through the results here. Uh, again, uh, two people, the two people who qualified in there from the from the last chance qualifiers were not who we would think. There was no. a lot of uh, Japanese players who made it out there. Yeah, but, uh, Tachikawa was there yeah. and uh, Big Bird was there. I think those are probably the two favorites, yeah. but neither one did it. But uh, crazy... Verdoyans, Verdoyans, uh, as well Verdoyans. as Jack Vin Jack, yeah, uh, were the ones that made uh, the, the last chance. So tied yeah. for thirteenth place was Red Bull's Luffy, 
with Armika yeah, and RB two. with Urien and Balrog. Uh, MD, Mr. Crimson with Lara. Yeah. And unfortunately, Crazy Verdoyance, so he didn't do particularly well, but he did use yeah. Fang and Birdie. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he had actually qualified. I mean, he won Grand Finals of the qual- of the Open Qualifier mm-hmm. with Birdie. I'm oh, sorry, with Fang. So his going with Fang was like not a joke. Like, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. He was legit, but yeah, he ended up losing. So. Uh, ninth place was Hado Jack Finn Jack, so he only managed to win the... It was unfortunate that they had to get paired against each other. Right, the it two was, open bracket qualifiers just drew the numbers 15 to play and 16. each other. Yeah, it was really unfortunate Bummer. that it ended up that way, but... Uh, uh, Echo Fox Tokido with Akuma. Uh, ninth place, uh, Kwamba Doyu Shaohai with uh, Kami. And CYG BST PR Balrog with Balrog. Those two in ninth place. Those two players are guys who did have to do the red eye. And like PR Balrog, I mean, he was dead. Yeah. He was so tired when he was there. I mean, and then literally he was at the airport with us leaving. And, we're, and I was like, I know you're tired, but did you at least enjoy yourself here? And he was like, I wasn't even here for 24 hours. And I was like, holy crap, you're uh, right. <laughs> he, he didn't even get to spend 24 hours in France. That's like, wild. He actually had less than 24 hours practically. So. Yeah, and, and he told us, uh, we, we were like, why don't you go take a nap, you know, while the matches mm-hmm. were going on. You know, you know the schedule once the, everything's pulled. Mm-hmm. So after you play, it's going to be like an hour or two until you play again. Why don't you take a nap? And he said that if he had fallen asleep, that he would have just been groggy the whole day, and he would have been playing much worse even than... There are some people who are not good nap people. Yeah, and, and, I, and I'm one of them, so oh, I, okay. I totally oh, get it. Okay. I totally okay. get okay. it. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, so, uh, seventh place was BX3 Phenom, another one of the red-eye flyers yeah. out there, and XYZZY Birdie. Uh, fifth place was Red Bull's Bonchan. First... Oh, he sucks! He's washed up. Boo. He totally didn't win his fourth tournament in four weeks. What a jobber. Yeah. I mean, he lost to some good people. Oh, yeah, of course. Someone who won the tournament and then the... Dude, so he lost to Daigo. He got eliminated by Daigo. Yeah. Okay, here's a true story. I was sitting up there in the player area watching Daigo's first match, which he lost, by the way, because yeah. all the four red-eye guys, only one person won their first match. That was <laughs> Kiar Balrog. Yeah. Everyone else lost their first match. Bonchan was standing at the rail watching. As soon as Daigo lost, Bonchan was like, yes! Like, he was, like, cheering. Because he does not want to play Daigo. Yeah. He says that he has so much trouble playing Daigo. Yeah. In in, in any fighting game, I guess. So. Were, were you there when we were talking with Tokido as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, so, uh-huh. so Tokido said that in, in casuals, Daigo bodies everybody. Uh-huh, including uh-huh. Tokido, including Bonchan. Like, he just kills everybody. Uh-huh. Uh, but that in particular, it's super tough for Bonchan to beat Daigo. Like, you just can't <laughs> do it. So, yep. there you go. And then, sure enough, you ended up losing to him. But uh, fifth place was also Razor Infiltration with yeah. Karina. Yeah. So, and he even was able to bring his fiance out there. Yeah, they were that was nice. Yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool. Um, for... To, his intro, did you see his intro where he walked down with the E-League hat and he like rips it off, throws it away, and then walks up and gives a, gets a kiss from his fiance and then heads into the cage? Dude, he was like super, you know, he was like, the, the, he was the alpha for that tournament. <laughs> uh, fourth place was Twitch HX, CYG, freaking letters, Daigo Umahara with Guile. There you go. Impressed everyone. And I know everyone in the chat is joking about, you know, sober Daigo because after he did poorly at E-League, he's like, you know, I really need to probably be better with my health, eat better, and stop drinking as much. And so now everyone's always like, oh, sober Daigo. Dude, in Japan, you drink a lot, okay? Yeah. It's just the way it works. It's just It just happens, so. And, uh, well, I've drank with Daigo in the past. He He's an incredible competitor. <laughs> <laughs> in drinking. <laughs> oh, man. I've seen that man take down five or six, like, big 750 milliliter beers. In one sitting? Yeah. Jesus. It's just for him. Dang. That was years ago. I don't know if he's still doing that stuff, but, I mean, he was <laughs> probably five years ago. He was really okay, impressive yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. at the time, so. Oh, man. Third place. Super impressive. Yes. Excel Infectious with Nikali. And uh, he ended up losing to uh, Nemo, who used Urian. And it was funny because we all know Nemo hates Zangief. And Infectious used Nikali against him. He did use Zangief a couple of times. Yeah, right? but, he did. 
afterwards, after the tournament, I talked to him. I was like, so why'd you go Nikali? And he was like, I saw him play against Haitani. And he was like, the way Nemo played against Haitani, he barely won. And he's like, I play completely different than Haitani. So I was like, I had the read and I knew, I was like, okay, I'm ready to go. I'm like, but Nemo hates Zangief and he has like a mental block against him. And Zangief blows him up. Yeah. And Fechter was like, oh God, you're right. I forgot. <laughs> I felt so bad. I was like, oh man, you should have just totally went with Zangi. Oh, but I loved man. his Nikali. His, his Nikali is, is a very grappler influenced Nikali. Yeah, uh huh. Uh-huh. Really fun to watch. I usually hate watching that character because I feel like either it's boring or like I. It's like hard to identify like what the goal is <laughs> right. a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. For Nikali, uh-huh, they're just like uh-huh. dancing around. I don't know, man. But his, he had a very set goal. And to his credit, he went up 2-0 on Nemo. So yeah, like, uh-huh, he uh-huh. did come with something that Nemo wasn't yeah, expecting. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. But Nemo was awesome. He, you know, figured yeah, he it out. should have switched because that would have been that would have almost been guaranteed at that point. I think so. Yep. But uh, I mean, look, you can't even make fun of the guy, dude. He got third, but he beat a lot of good players yeah. make it there. So, uh, including Uma Hardargo. Yeah. So shout outs to Infectious. He was him and second place Gachikun, or as. Z kept pronouncing it, Gatakun. Gatakun, yeah. Uh, with Rashid. Those two were definitely, I felt like, the MVPs of that tournament because Gatakun, like, he hasn't traveled as much. We don't yeah. get to see him. Infectious, he doesn't travel as much. We don't get yeah. to see him. And they just blew everybody up. Yeah. So shout outs for them. But first place, Alienware, Nemo, Nemo. With Urien, Urien. He was looking good. Yep. He's and, a smarty uh, pants. I was like, it's so funny because, like, obviously I picked Bonchan to win it because he had been winning everything. But second place, I had Bonchan. I had your, uh, Nemo winning it. Not because I thought he had the best chance because I just really wanted him to win. Okay. Because I just, I'm so sick of the fact that Yurian is, like, not doing well at tournaments. And I was like, yeah. no, no, Nemo is going to come here and body everybody <laughs> this weekend. He's going to blow everything well. up. And he was just doing some ridiculous stuff with yeah. that character, dude. Yeah, I mean, oh, he plays God. he plays a very distinct Nemo style like he always does, mm-hmm. you know, but I feel like that works super well for you. For yeah. your like when we got to interview him at the end, you kept, you pointed out the meaty EX headbutt. Yeah, dude, he did meaty EX headbutt, and he it was blocked, and he died for it. <laughs> but even still, it was like such a Such tell, a read, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, but it was like a, if, if I'm Gachikun in that situation, and I'm down... O two 2 right? Mm-hmm. And my opponent does that you accept. But it's not... I don't think... Okay, I got him. I think, wow. He thinks he has such a read on me. Yeah. Uh, that uh, he uh. does that, I'm definitely dead. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I got that round. That's a sign that I'm, I'm out of this uh, thing. <laughs> I will say one thing, though. I mean, a lot of people are saying, like, oh, well, you know, obviously Yurian is not doing so great and everything like that, and that maybe he isn't top tier and everything like that. I do agree that, you know, you do have to be a good player to do well with of him. Of course. But at the highest level, the character is ridiculous. He's he's too good. I, and I just, I, for some reason, I didn't even know until, like, the start of that weekend that EX Headbutt into Aegis was a combo. I was so mad when I found out that, because how was, like, that's like uppercut FADC, basically, into a mix-up. Wow, I mean, it's... Minus crush counter on block. Right, so. but still, you hit it and you FADC it, yeah. they're dead. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, oh, God. Yeah, it's it's good. Uh, I was really happy for Gachikun doing as well as he did, like you said. Um, but I feel the same way about Rashid. Rashid is super strong. You see him doing better more often than you see mm-hmm. Yurin for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, he played just amazingly well. And then at the end, as we were interviewing him, he said he just got... Too much in the mindset of attacking and like couldn't get out of it. Yeah. In time, so, uh-huh. um, but yeah, it'd be great if he if he uh, traveled more. I'd like to see him because he's super super strong. It's actually really cool to talk to those guys. Afterwards. So, uh, if folks didn't watch, I'd love to know. What you, or if you did watch, rather, I'd love to know what you think. But if you did not watch, after the tournament ended, James and I did uh, like an interview between the final fight breakdown. The yeah. Post show here at the Red Bull Kumite. I You're forgot, James Chen. I forgot my line at that point in time. Like I, I literally yeah, freaked out funny. there. So, nah, but you know, all, no big deal. Um, anyway, we interviewed Nemo and Gachkun as we like watched through their match, their grand finals, and that's something that like I've always thought would be a cool idea, but we've never really gotten to do. And so I was happy to be able to to do it. 
I thought it was interesting. I thought it could have gone better, uh, in part because, and this, you know, to be expected, but um, the translation time was like the delay. Yeah. You know, was like it was kind of rough. Unfortunate because we couldn't like, you well, know, respond quickly or like if the players were responding with something that like we knew the answer to already, I couldn't be like, yeah, 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 but like, uh, like uh, narrow down. Plus, you know? plus the other thing too that was really tough was that. We were doing analysis and asking questions at the same time. And so your job when you're working with a translator is to ask short questions. Because that way the yeah. translator doesn't have right. to memorize a giant sure. thing. But like we were like, this section was really interesting because they were doing this and this. And they <laughs> had this really great strategy, blah, blah, blah. What was he thinking in that situation? Yeah. Whoops. And it was like, dang it. Okay, I had the question short, but the context is not short at For all. Sure. So, so I was rooting for infections. To beat Nemo. Not just because I thought that would have been cool, but because, <laughs> hey, at least one person yeah, I would have needed uh, a translator for. So. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it could have gone better, but I, I did really like the idea of it and, you know, hope to do that I, kind yeah, of thing more often. I think it went well. Uh, again, if anyone actually watched it, let us know how you guys like it. So if you guys would like to see more of that kind of stuff, we can talk to other people for production. And again, I was just really happy because Red Bull, you know, was willing to try to do something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're trying to, they're trying to uh, do different things. And I yeah. thought that was really cool. Agreed. That was really cool. So. Ah, with respect to pausing the replay, actually, that was something that they had planned to do. And they, they had even said things like, uh, you know, you can say on the mic, like, hey, let's replay or let's pause let's or whatever. Let's go back. Go back a few seconds. Yeah, let's go back yeah. a few seconds. Right. It just ended up being that there wasn't enough time, in part because of the translations taking much, much longer than we thought, you know, than we had planned mm -hmm. for. And some other stuff, it just wasn't enough time for that, unfortunately. Yeah, because on the fly, because, cool. like, one of the hardest things about doing commentary like this, the more higher-level production we get to, and, in fact, this is happening even on CPT and everything like this, is that we have people talking in our ear a lot of the time. That's true. Right? So it's, it's funny, because now I totally get it. Sometimes when you actually watch live sports broadcasts and people start spacing out, and you're like, why is this guy not saying anything? Or why is he stumbling over his words? Probably because someone's barking in his ear about something, right. you know what I mean? And so, like, I now that I understand that, like, yeah, we were just at a position where, like, it was like, we're running out of time. Yeah. We're running out of time. Keep the question shorter. <laughs> right, you yeah. Know? So it was like, whoops. Yeah, so that, that's part of why people are talking about it now. That's part of why we talked more about the mentality and composure, sort of generalities. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to focus in super deep on some things, uh -huh. but then we were running out of time. And furthermore, the couple times when I did try to get that, I think there just must have been like some translation issues or whatever. Uh -huh. But like my my attempt to be like, all right, Gachkun, like you're down now, but like what specifically <laughs> do you need to do? What's in, to make this happen? Like where do you need to stand? Right. Like, uh -huh. what, like like the exact space. Like I want to know the deep stuff. And then it came back as like I need the corner. I'm better if I have the corner. Like, oh, yeah, damn. I know. I totally That's didn't. not the question. Totally didn't even notice, but we listed as Ice and Katana Prime are still here. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, that's been out all the time. So, you know, you I just said... Say... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I... Thanks, David. <laughs> Thanks, David. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so that, that's, that was the uh, explanation there. So. But I'd love to do that kind of thing more often. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Iron it out a little bit. Okay. Um... Okay. Anything else you want to say about the results there? Paris is cool. Uh, you know what? In retrospect, some FGC members from France, they offered to get me Tekken 7 from their local mom and pop uh -huh, that breaks uh -huh. street date. And I was like, don't worry about it, guys. Appreciate it. But, you know, I go home and I got the old mom and pop here in L.A. It'll be fine. And then it turns out it doesn't have it in yet. So. <laughs> Bummer. Uh, also, um, a, a couple of dudes... Uh, in the Parisian scene, offered to let me come over and play Injustice Saturday night. Oh, dang, uh, nice. And, okay. and, you know, ultimately, uh -huh. we didn't have time, unfortunately, but uh, appreciate that, and yeah. would love to have been able to do that some other time. I guess. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, like, I mean, so GTO Kira in the chat says that next tournament that Nemo will be at is at Rage Volume 4 on June 10th, but uh, again, I just hope to see more Nemo going around, yeah. because, like, I just, I, I, I want to see Yuri and blowing more people up. Right. I just, I just want to see that, so. What? Je d'accord. Okay. Oui, oui, oui. Oui. Sans les membres qui vont très bien ensemble. J'y sens frontier. You're singing. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Yes, you got it, man. When I got there, my French was at like 
two percent battery. Uh, <laughs> but you recharged it a little. Recharged bit. Recharged it a little bit. Yeah, yeah it was maybe uh, like thirty percent uh, when we left. You know. Oh man. Okay. <clears throat> All righty. So break time. Yeah, let's take a break, and when we come back, we will be talking about Koi gaming videos, and then. Just games all over the place, so... Okay, be right back, guys. That's right, I accepted. <laughs> Alright, welcome back to the Tuesday. So we got some more stuff to talk about. Uh, very interesting video. Put really out video, by yeah. Core A Gaming. Uh, uh, A.K.A. Gerald, Gerald Lee, yeah. Uh, look, he puts out great videos all the time. He does. Like, this is... Not necessarily an exception, like, oh, this is a great, like, they're all great. Oh, yeah. But this one was particularly an interesting topic. Explain away. Uh, basically, he kind of went into why dumbing down fighting games is bad for the game and uh, kind of talking about, you know, how it's affecting Street Fighter V and how he feels like that that is kind of harmful to the game. And uh, just kind of goes into a bunch of examples, talks about, you know... Um, God, I can't even remember all the details in there now. Um, I watched the video twice, too, and it's so funny that I can't, like, recall a lot of the examples that he had in there. But uh, it was just it was just really well put together and just talked about how, you know, there's different ways and, like, Street Fighter V's lack of defense. Oh, that's right. So basically he was talking about how it seemed like Street Fighter V was being made mostly for, like, viewers, and less for the players. And he had snippets from all of the Born Free Tweet interviews yeah. where just player after player was like, there's no defensive options, yeah. I can't express myself in this game, this game is garbage, this game, I like, you know, well, that came from F Champ, no surprise. So just a lot of those kind of situations. So Yeah, everything from uh, talking about the lack of execution in terms of how super stupid easy it is to parry. Right. Uh -huh. Right. Um, to uh, the fact that like there are no... Like really tough combos to uh, mm -hmm. to uh, the fact that there's you know relatively few defensive options and sort of all sorts of things that mm -hmm. he views as being dumbed down. So uh, I I liked the point of it because I certainly agree that dumbing down fighting games is bad mm -hmm. news. Mm -hmm. um, no nobody wants that in the competitive scene, right? Um, and but I think he made the good point that it's not just that the competitive scene doesn't want that stuff. There should be, and often for other developers, is more of a relationship between the the players mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the developer itself. Uh, that you know, uh, developer understands that it's beneficial to them to keep their hardcore fans right. engaged and happy. Yeah, and also uh, he was also talking about how the input lag forces oh, predictive course. play, as yeah, Ardusk points lag. out. So yeah, yeah, for sure. So. Um, I mean, I think those are all great points, you know. I, I certainly wish that Capcom was more plugged into what the hardcore scene wants and that even if they disagreed with what people want, at least, like, have a better community interaction. I think these are things everybody agrees yeah. with. And nobody likes input lag, right? right like, it's... Right. Even I, as somebody who doesn't care about execution, really, I feel like they probably are a little bit too far south on that quotient, mm -hmm. you know? Probably should be a little bit stronger than it is, so... Yeah, I think yeah, those were all I legit. Mean, that's the thing is, like, I, I, I keep mentioning this all the time, but all the highlights, all highlights in fighting games are always when people do some crazy execution shit, right? Like, the Daigo parry. Yeah. Reason why, and he talks about this heavily in the video, the reason why everyone is so ecstatic about that video is because when you watch it, you know it's hard to do. You know that everything Daigo sure. did there was super hard to do, especially in the context of the situation. And so, you know... I still remember Street Fighter V's first viral highlight was Chris G doing the Sonic Boom loop mm. to Blockbuster John in an online match. That's right. It wasn't even a tournament footage. It was just, hey, look, someone finally did some really hard execution fun thing. That's true. You know, and, and, and then also Street Fighter IV, everyone loved the Smug video where Viper did the unfortunate neutral jump at the beginning of the round. Right. You know, it's just like Daigo when he did the 20 hit combo right. of Momochi, everyone loved that. And it's just like, I just feel like that's missing. I feel like that's missing. And, 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 and the, the combos, the hard combos, see, the, the, really the crux is this. Make the game so that there are hard combos to do, but the hard combos maybe generally do maybe slightly more damage yeah. than the basic BNBs. Like, just maybe like 10% more, 5% yeah. more. But what that allows is that for players to go for it in the middle of combos because they're feeling themselves... And they can express themselves. Like Gamer B, when he used Adon in Street Fighter 4, he would 
do a combo and then go into that weird like medium and the strong and the jab and the weird ever uppercut and the yeah. double uppercut like he would just do that because he was like I'm feeling myself right. and I want to style on people so yeah um, you know personally the things that I tend to remember or care about are not the execution side of things mm-hmm. but you know I know that I'm more on the I care less about execution right. side than most so that's fine um, so like I said I agree with a lot of his points I just feel like they're overstated when it comes to Street Fighter V because I feel like mm-hmm. the game does have execution aside, mm-hmm. right? Obviously, um, I think I feel it has a lot of complexity, and I feel like it's developing more and more complexity. Mm-hmm. And that the people who are winning are winning because they are farther on the side of we get it first. Yeah, yeah, than yeah. Everybody yeah. else does. So, um, so uh, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of stuff, and like it's very difficult to. Part of what he talked about was uh, the luck to. What was the other factor? Luck versus. You know, he had a graph, he had a chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I don't remember forgot. what that one was. But anyway, you know, not luck. Uh, whatever it was. Uh, he, he placed SF5 on that, or at least alluded to placing it on there, more on the mm-hmm. luck side. And I just don't think that that's real. Um, in fact, I feel like my saying, I don't think that's real, is inaccurate. Because factually, it's not real. The results do not bear right. it out. Yeah. The results bear out that there's a lot of skill. It's just skill. I thought it was something else. Okay, luck cross skill. <laughs> uh, I thought it was something fancier than that. Uh, anyway, the, the the results of the game are just way too consistent. Yeah, way too consistent to to reasonably believe that luck is a bigger factor than most other games. Interestingly yeah. enough, like I I feel like that kind of is a little more in. So the thing that I don't like about Street Fighter Five is I just don't feel like there's enough variety in the game. Mm-hmm. And the game caters to one particular type of player. I actually find that the consistency might actually be a sign of that. Is that in Street Fighter 4, a lot more people were winning because different styles worked. Mm. And the okay. greatest players of the different styles could succeed in those styles. But right now, I feel like the, the results are so consistent because Punk, Knuckle Dew, and Fudo, and those guys are all just the biggest go you know like crazy kind of guys and even Daigo you can see the way Daigo plays Guile he is legitimately saying you know what I just need to EX flash kick more often because if I play logical I can't win in this game he is playing the craziest Guile that I've ever seen and it it feels like he's throwing caution to the wind because he knows you can't win in this game by playing as logical as possible well that's every video game but um, I, I feel like it's it's true. I mean, I agree. One of my critiques of the game is that there's not enough playstyle variety. Mm-hmm. I'm totally with you there. That said, I find a lot of playstyle variety between the players who are doing really well. Yeah. Um, it's just maybe not in the same way that it used to be. Uh, if you look at, like, Gachikun versus... Well, maybe more like, let's look at the Nikalis who do well, right? Like, Phenom and then Infectious and Haitani and... I feel like those guys all have quite different styles. Gamer B, I feel like those players are very, yeah. not at all the same when it comes to how they play Nikali. So it's one character, you got one guy who plays it like a grappler. Mm-hmm. One is like a zoner. The other couple are like, like a couple of them do random DPs all the time. <laughs> a couple more like very patient, but right. like capitalized. Mm-hmm. So you, there are these really different ways to play. So I, I don't I don't agree that it's the case that uh, you have to be wild. I do think it's the case that you can't sit there and play defensively and block. Right. I yeah, totally yeah, agree yeah, yeah. there. Uh-huh, but uh-huh. Uh, you cannot... Uh, you can't just wait it out. But I think that's fine. I mean, I'm yeah. totally cool with the game having I mean, that I, kind of style. I feel like the two more successful Nikali players, Phenom and Haitani, are the more YOLO uppercutty ones. Uh, like, yeah, I guess that's others. true. Like, Gamer B doesn't have the same success as those two. Not now. Example. Yeah, that's right. true. So, but Infectious just got third place and almost got into grand finals by playing it as a grappler. Yeah. So. And I don't mean by playing wild. And that's the thing. is I, I, I think that's just Daigo's interpretation of it. You know what I mean? But really what it is, is not being trainable. That's that's the main thing that's about the game. That's every game, game. Though. Yeah, but every it's... Every single fighting game. But in this game, it's so much more imperative because this game puts you into so many rock, paper, scissors situations. I, don't, I just don't really agree with that. I, I, I feel like if you get put on the defensive in this game, you've already lost. So yeah. um, you... The important thing about this game is movement, and if you look at, again, the grand finals of Rebel Kumite was movement versus movement, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Gachikun versus Nemo. 
That's just how it always is in, in this game. If you have better movement, you do better. Right. I feel like Punk has fantastic movement. Right. Um, and I, I just feel that way about all the, all the top players. Yeah, so. it's just interesting, because like when I play something like, for example, like when I play Street Fighter 2, yeah. I play Kami versus Ryu, yeah. right? Only time I'm ever guessing is to j- YOLO jump over a fireball. But outside of that, like I don't feel like I'm ever guessing in that matchup. Like I feel like I'm actually controlling the pace, and I can just assert my game plan. Like I don't feel like there's guesses outside of jumping over fireball. How do you deal damage? Because I just apply pressure, and then I do crouching medium kick into drill, and I do that enough to scare them into one thing so I can hooligan throw them, or I can walk up throw them. It's all about conditioning. It's all about getting... But I'm never guessing. I'm never like, you know what, this time I'm going to go for hooligan. This time I'm going to go for drill. I do feel like I'm actually conditioning people. This sounds just like arguments that are from like the Third <laughs> Strike days. Uh, and if there's anything that I learned from Third Strike, it's that everything's guessing. Every, every time you do crouch and medium kick into drill, you're betting that he's not going to do a delayed DP, right? Every time you do walk up grab, you're, get, you're betting that he's not going to do a DP or a sweep or mm-hmm. a counter grab or something. Every single thing is a guess. Every fighting game is like that, and it's inescapable. It's just something that you have to be okay with if you want to play not even just a fighting game. Mm-hmm. When you play any strategy game, chess, every move you make is a guess. Obviously, it's educated. Right. Every move you make is nevertheless a guess. So you just have to be okay with that in strategy. I mean, it's but it's definitely exaggerated in five compared to the other fighting games, I just, in my opinion. Well, because I mean, look, you don't have very many defensive options. So I feel like if you get knocked down, your, it's your ass. But that means that the neutral game is super important. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. controlling that is, uh, is where the game is. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's cool. I feel like this. It, it's, it's, it, it's, like, remember we're talking with. Uh, it's the Marvel situation again. You just you can't if you yeah, got knocked like down, you're already like, lost. You're yes, already lost. So now you're in this horrible situation. You shouldn't have been knocked down in the first place. Correct, and it's right. like ST in that in that same regard. Mm-hmm. Like you better not let Honda do the bear grab on you because you're gonna die. Right. Right. I mean, uh-huh. it's uh-huh. if you're a dictator, you better not get ticked by Zangief because you're dead. Right. Like so, it's it's these very dangerous situations that you feel like you have control over because you know the game super well. I get the feeling because I feel like I certainly have more control in the games that I know really well than versus the games I'm still learning, mm-hmm. like SF5, because everybody's still learning that game. Right. Uh, in Third Strike, I feel like I have control a lot, even though I'm playing a terrible character and I'm losing most of my matchups, and I, there's a lot of guessing. I feel like I have control because I know all the things. Like, right, right. Like, I could guess left or right or up or down, but I know all those directions, you know what I mean? Right. Whereas in, in SF5, we're still learning, like, how valuable is down versus up? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't we're still figuring that stuff out, so yeah. it feels volatile, I mean, but like, it's not. I know, for example, like, I'm not trying to say that, like, Punk is, like, the luckiest player because he's... But that's what I mean. But Punk has a mindset where he can win really well because he's so good at mixing up between the shimmy options, the throw options, the meaty options, the frame trap options. He understands that really well. Oh, yeah, totally. You know, and he's the best at that. And, And I'm not trying to downplay his strategy. I'm just saying that that's the only way you can win at Street Fighter V in a lot of ways. You win by playing the neutral game and by moving. Yeah, but... I just don't feel like there's enough variety between the characters. Well, to I'm, again, really, I'm with you with that. You would, to, to, to really play that in, in the... In the I'm, I'm definitely with you there. Yeah. Uh, look, whether ge- guesses are reads or not, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like that's not um, a good question. Or, or not like a real point. I feel like it's like, fi- like kingdom guesses... And then, like, phylum reads in there. And then phylum, <laughs> I threw dice. Like, stuff like that. But it's definitely under guess. Hmm. It, it is. I mean, factually, you're not sure what the opponent's going to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. As a matter of actual fact, you have to guess what they're going right. to do. Right. It's guess, a guess. I guess that's my, my point is that in... Okay, so the best way that I've explained this before, right? This is how I see the guessing situation, is that in older games... Literally, it's like, so in Street Fighter Five, it's rock, paper, scissors, right? So it's guess. It's just basically guessing, mm-hmm. right? And that's what rock, paper, scissors is. However, I feel like in other games, it's more of a situation where you have these guessing scenarios, but let's say there's five possible outcomes. 
Doing this option handles three of the options. Doing this option handles two of the options. Doing this yeah, one handles four of the options. Uh -huh. Doing this one handles these three options. This one handles these two options. And so the guess isn't as prolific. Like, it's not a one-to-one -one guess. You know what I mean? Like, literally in Street Fighter V, it's like, I'm going to meet you, or I'm going to shimmy, or I'm going to throw. And, the, like, your defensive options is a one-to-one -one ratio with their yeah, offensive mix-up. Yeah. Right. Whereas in a lot of the other games, one defensive option will cover like like at over fifty percent of the options that they can come up sure. with, and so it's less guessy. You know what I mean? It's it's more of well, a. It's just as guessy, but you're likely to cover more options with a single guess. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Which makes it a little bit more that you have to read the opponent. You know what I mean? That you real. It's it's less trying to mix up between those three at a really good rate. But more like, how do I condition this person better? I don't know. It's it's. I just don't Those feel seem like, like competing things to me. Yeah, I just don't feel like I'm guessing as much when I play other fighting games. I think yeah. you're more used to other fighting games. I think we're all still learning SF five. Yeah, maybe. And I feel like at some point in the future, as always happens, mm -hmm. when Street Fighter six comes out, SF five players are going to say, "Can you believe how easy it is to hit confirm in Street Fighter six? There's only three frames of lag. This is a baby's <laughs> game." Or they're, they're gonna oh say, yeah, I mean, can, I've, you, like, I've... can you believe? Dragon Punch on Wake Up is a good option. How do you get any pressure? It's the death of the meaty. It's just a circle, man. Like this always. No, I mean I've always said always that. Happens. I've said that between four and five. I know everything that I know. Could, yeah, uh -huh. we both said it. And yeah, it's happening. And uh, we all we said that SF Five is going to have people who think like mm -hmm. this game is for babies and right, it's going right. to suck. And we don't see the value in X and Y, and and uh, that definitely is happening. So I just, man. Don't let yourself fall into that trap. <laughs> I mean, I, I still enjoy the game, right? But the thing about it is, to me, it, even in Street Fighter Four, I felt like there was a lot of top players who actually stood up for the game. I, I just don't see that right now. Yeah, I think that is true. But uh, I think, uh, in my view, uh, a big part of that is the money, is the fact that people are playing this professionally now. In Street Fighter Four, when that game came out, a lot of people just quit. They just didn't play SF4. Mm -hmm. They just kept playing Third Strike or whatever, right? right? Um, and you, we heard that a lot at the time. Like SF, they were stopping to play because SF4 was a baby's game. It was too defensive. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. It was too slow. Crouch tech is absurd. It was dumbed like, down. Dumbed yeah, down. Very dumbed down. And so down. they just stopped playing because there's like no reason to keep playing yeah. if you don't like a game. Mm -hmm. But if you can earn one hundred fifty thousand dollars playing a game, you better keep playing that game, <laughs> even if you don't like it. Because uh, that's your money. Yeah. So I feel like that's a big part of the top player factor. Yeah, that's true. When it comes to that's that, definitely true. So. Uh, I don't know. Something. It's just. It's just. It. The reason why it's not even like I'm mad at the game or I hate the game or anything because I still enjoy the game. I still like the game. I like watching yeah. it and everything. It's just that when I see something like Corey Gaming put out this video, which is where this conversation kind of came right. from, is you know is that he doesn't even have to try. To find those segments and that many oh, totally. interviews of people just really mad at the game. And uh, to me, you know, my frustration, I'm trying to figure out what it is about the game that has caused everybody to dislike it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was even on Twitter today arguing with somebody because uh, the, the guy was like, you know, he wants to see if he can play Street Fighter 4 to teach him better fundamentals to be better at 5. And I was like, hmm. it's not necessarily a thing yeah. because like... People when they first played Street Fighter Four, it's like this game has no fundamentals, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? You know, so it's like it's not that's not how it works. It's the nostalgic colored glasses for sure, yeah. right? But I'm just trying to figure out what it is about this game that makes everybody so frustrated. Yeah, I think it's I think it's the lack of defensive options, like you were talking about. Yeah. That and and lack of different play styles. Yeah. And those I, are total, those are totally true things. Yeah. 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 Oh man. Huh? But I like I, I like the game. I mean, I identify problems with it, like mm -hmm. I was just saying. Uh, but I feel like if so, my my main concern, as I said on the Twitter land, is that Ca uh, Capcom does not let the game develop in a way that would lead to more complexity. Mm -hmm. And part of that is them getting rid of jump back or jump option select type. Right. Because people had begun using a thing that you know allowed them to deal with multiple options defensively. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's not like it was brand new. It was known about an SF4. It was just why would you bother? Because there were other options. 
Uh, but in, in SF5, it was more useful. So I like that because it was the beginning of maybe more complexity. And then you, as you with Crouch Tech, right? Crouch Tech was seen ri ridiculously strong. And then people were like, why don't I delay my media attack? Right. And then uh, people were like, well, if you're going to delay your media attack, I'll do an immediate actual throw. Right. And that'll beat it. So they developed this right. interesting thing. Uh, um, it, it, Crouch Tech, or sorry, a Jump OS Tech could have had the same yeah. mix-ups, but it's not going to because they're taking it out. So that's and it's funny, that's my concern is that Capcom even, doesn't let it grow. I still don't even think it's being taken out. It's still uh, going to well, be it there. Was, it was in the, in, the, in the beta that came out. It, like, Tool Assisted did full testing on it. Like, what's the, if you press up, there's then a window where you cannot tech. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. they actually created a window. Yeah, they created a window. So Ooh, I, uh, okay, okay. I don't know if that's what ended up in the patch, of course. We'll have to test that. Got but it, got it. Okay, okay. Actually gone, unfortunately. So, um, okay. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's unfortunate. And I feel like that's... If, if that kind of thing keeps happening, because that's not the only piece of tech we're going to find. There's going to be more stuff. There always mm -hmm. is. I don't know what it is yet, but it's going to come. Will they let it stay? If not, then I'm worried because that means that we can't develop the interesting complexity. That means people feel like they can't control things, right? They're always put into a situation that they don't know what to do in. Yeah. So that's what I'm worried about more. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, we'll have to see how it goes, I guess. I mean, we're going to have to keep going. I mean, because, like, I'm scared we're not going to have the chance to develop all this tech. Because if Marvel comes out and it's fun and amazing... Yeah. I mean, this is something PR Rog said to us. Yeah, right? oh, I, I like, agree with it. He was like, if Marvel is fun, everyone's just going to drop Street they Fighter might. because Capcom will put all their money into Marvel all of a sudden, you know? Yeah. And so it's kind of scary. Like, will Street Fighter Five even have that chance? I don't know, man. Don't I know. really hope it does. Know. But in any case, I certainly hope that they... Uh, oh, mean, yeah, I don't care if it's king. Like, let it let it die, you know? I mean, that's fine, but it just, oh, like, it's just yeah, a shame... Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't it's want any shame. games to yeah, die, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Of course. So. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, anyway, okay, very look, interesting video, and I highly recommend it. Yeah, some people are talking about the roster leak. Look, I t uh, it's so easy to talk about any leaks. I can post up a leak right now if I wanted to. I just really don't care about leaks. Agreed, yeah. yeah. NVCI yeah. leaks, right? Yeah, the roster care. leak on NVCI. I E3 just, is um, coming up soon. We'll find out. Yeah, I know. At least part of it, probably. Don't even have to wait that long. It's like, right. It's like next week, right? Still so. bad about leaks. Come on. Oh, man. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, is it verified? I mean, like... What? The, the roster, is it verified? I mean, like... Oh, I don't know. I've not really paid attention to yeah. it, to be honest. Oh, I haven't had a chance to watch that yet. Uh, someone did do a counterpoint to Gerald's uh, video. Mm, I heard. I haven't seen yeah, it Yeah, I haven't seen it. I have it liked on my Twitter, but Twitter likes are garbage pretty much, so I, it's hard for me to remember to go back and look at that. So I really hope that they just pay attention, that they interface more with the community. I feel like that is yeah. the number one thing that I want from them mm -hmm. right now. Agree. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, do you want to take a quick break? Sure. And when we come back, we'll just squeeze everything else out. Squeeze it out. Squeeze it out. All right. Be mm -hmm. right back. Be right back. All right. So there's a bunch of more stuff to talk about. This is a an extended show. What the heck just happened? Are we uh, on the internet still? No, we're dead. My computer's restarting. Or something. Or did it just... No, I guess we're still going. It just somehow... It got minimized. It was just the desktop minimization thing happened, so... Oh. No, I did die. I mean, I'm... Right? I think we're still live. I think we're still live. Hmm. Okay, well... Are we dead or are we here? Are we here? People are saying rip. Oh, everything is fine. Okay. Uh, Capcom. Capcom, yeah, Capcom bodied us. Okay. Uh, All right. All right. Let's talk about lots of new games and yeah. updates and everything, dude. There's just lots of stuff. So many things going on. So many things going on. What do you so, want to start with? Uh, Guilty Gear Revelator Two is out. I've downloaded the update, and it's really weird because I downloaded the update, and when you update it from Guilty Gear Revelator, the menu on the title screen still says, you know, on the PlayStation Four home screen, uh, I think it still just says Revelator. Right. And then you pick it, and it all of a sudden becomes Revelator <laughs> Two. 
really strange, but oh, I'm so happy. So yeah. I'm definitely going to be excited about that. I'm going to be trying to play some biking hopefully this Thursday on the beginner streams. So nice. I'll be able to upgrade. But um, yeah, I'm just super excited for the game. Uh, last time when I played with a bunch of people, Sanchez was showing me a bunch of cool things about Answer. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was really cool. So, he looks like a really interesting character, I gotta say. Yeah, he's, he's pretty crazy. He's pretty crazy. Yeah, I've been but, watching more gear just to... I don't know, why not? It's fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'll play it, but it really does look cool. Gotta say. Uh, but yeah, that came out. Um, really excited about that. You can buy it standalone or you can buy the upgrade. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to buy the upgrade, again, you have to go to Revelator, find the add-on there, buy uh, that. I... Then you at, wait till it's downloaded and then you like start up Rev 1 and then it like becomes Rev 2. It's, it's a weird process. Is it out for Steam as well? i not sure. No, Steam is not out yet. Steam's Steam not is out. not out okay. yet. So... But, um, yeah, definitely picked that up. A lot of people said they were going to wait for it. There was no reason to wait for it because the upgrade price was only $20. <laughs> but even if you did wait for it, the time is now. Go buy it and play it. So, Got it. Uh, also, uh, any new thoughts on Injustice 2? Apparently Steam is coming out soon. Oh, okay. In 10 hours, apparently. Oh, so. perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah, Injustice is going great. It's, it's just such a fun game and... I feel like every person I talk to thinks that their character is top tier or close to it. Because <laughs> I certainly feel that way about the characters I'm playing, like Bane and Scarecrow and uh, Swamp Thing and Fate. I feel like all of them, if not if they're not top tier, it's because other characters are even crazier. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they're not weak for sure. Right, right. And it, uh, I put on a list today of like 15 characters that people have told me that they think are top tier. Uh, and then when I did that, two other people were like. What about these other two, <laughs> Harley and Grodd? So, I don't know. It's it's very dif very difficult to know where the game is going to go. Uh, I really am having a lot of fun with it, and I was fiending for it whilst in Paris. <laughs> I actually downloaded the Rev Two update yesterday, and then I messed with Johnny for like two like for like five minutes, and then I actually went to Injustice because I'm trying to learn some other characters right now. I just want to know what I want to do before I jump online on it, so ah. I'm going to actually do some ranked matches on next Monday. You know, I just oh, nice. do the Street Fighter stuff. Maybe I'll switch to Injustice for a little bit. Yeah, man. So I really want to figure out that game and how to play it, so... The only character I've seen people say negative things about consistently is Wonder Woman. <laughs> Wonder Woman, right? Yeah. Which is ironic because they're doing this whole movie tie-in special thing that's going on in the game right now. Go watch Wonder Woman and then go play her and she's garbage, you know, kind of thing. So. Yeah, she has a random trait, which is a, always a bummer. Um, oh, her trait hat can do one of like a few random yeah. things? Oh, that sucks. Um, and it doesn't seem like she... I feel like she lost some important strings and didn't really get them back. And mm, It's like okay. she doesn't really control the mid-range that well and she doesn't zone that well and she uh, when she does damage when she gets a combo she tends to throw the opponent far away afterward and then it's like what do you do from there right okay okay i don't know i'm not really sure but yeah anyway fun fun game so that's not the only thing you got ultra street fighter 2 i did get ultra street you fighter 2 yes i downloaded it with the shitty hotel wi-fi too like, I actually just connected to it. I, like, started downloading. I was like, man, went, took a shower, came back, still wasn't done. Yeah. Played a bunch of Mario Kart, looked at it, still wasn't done. <laughs> Played some Tetris, still wasn't, oh, okay, it was done. And okay. then I finally got the chance to try it. I mean, it's weird on the Joy-Cons, obviously. Uh, it's yeah. very, very weird on those little controllers. And even when you play with both of them, it's weird because there's no D-pad. There's no directional pad or digital pad, as I like to call it. Um... There's no D-pad on there because the, the Switch, it's an analog controller and four buttons. Right. Right? So you use the four buttons. So in the case of Tetris where you really only need to hit left, right, up and down, it's fine. But all of a sudden this game where diagonals are crucial, it's really hard. <laughs> really, really hard. So you really kind of have to play with an analog stick. And I never got low forward in the Super with Ken, like once. I could not do it. Well, that's not easy, right? Yeah, but I mean, I, mean, I know, I know you can me. do it. No, I, yeah, I get it. You can do it on stick, of course. It's me. No, I'm just <laughs> but uh, it was kind of interesting. But what's what what the, the, the biggest problem to me is that like Violent Ken and Evil Ryu are like so busted. Yeah. Like Violent Ken can fight Akuma in that game. Nobody can fight Akuma in that game. Yeah. But Violent Ken can, right? I yeah. mean, that's that's an indication. And then also, the, the thing that bothers me is like they added the throw techs in the game. 
They removed things like stored supers, and they also went and changed a bunch of the annoying inputs. I almost said codes. I'll just call them input codes. Um, so they changed a bunch of those. Sangif Green Hat is uppercut now. Beautiful, right? Okay, cool. Uh, Fei Long's the chicken wing and Cammy's hooligan are half circles now. Great. Um, her, her spin knuckle is backwards spin, uh, half circle now. Okay. Dalsum's yoga flame. Backwards half yoga flame, right? Like backwards it. yoga flame. So they, they did stuff and then they didn't balance anything else. And so I actually feel like the balance is worse in this game because one, you have two super broken characters here. If like evil were you like even if he doesn't have a touch of death like four hits drains like 80 percent of your life it's like really silly and um violent ken just has this gets uppercut teleport uppercut teleport like you just really i mean he turned into left right mix up god and I, then, I saw a video and i don't know how accurate it is of him doing stand fierce teleport stand fierce teleport stand fierce teleport in the mm -hmm. corner and it was a block string was it a block string in i don't it? know oh, i mean that's, okay. that's what people said i haven't tried it okay okay but. <laughs> backwards half yoga flame yeah I don't know what the hell I was saying but like here's a couple of things right you you throw, put in a tech like Blanca and Dalsum automatically become worse Ken automatically becomes like really bad right because they relied on their holds to sure. win right they, I felt like they were balanced around that concept so way, way. throw tech applies to holds as well as normal grabs yeah uh -huh. and uh, and then Both one of the flips. code changes they made was a terrible decision so Ken's funky kicks they got rid of the forward to down funky kick yeah. They made it half circle back. So now he has a half circle back that overlaps the spin kick, which is what they did to get rid of... I mean, look, he has a funky kick that's fireball and half circle forward now, right? So he all four motions, because funky kick half circle is the is the roundhouse, and then the other one was the... the, the anyways, you can't even do walk-up sweep into Tatsu anymore. Like, it's impossible, because... You'll always do half circle back plus kick because you're walking forward and then you go yeah. to down forward to kick and then you try That's to right. like. So, I mean, he had some gimmicks with that, That's true. but like it's not there anymore. And then they just didn't balance the rest of it. So I'm just like, what are you doing with this game? Like, you obviously put some thought into it to fix some things in it, and then you just didn't even bother fixing anything else. So I'm super confused by this. Yeah. It's like really kind of frustrating. It seems confusing. And it is an HD remix because there's none of the HD remix changes in the game. Ah. None of the HD remix changes are in the game. You can't even pick them. And say what you want about HD remix, but his intention was to balance things. Mm -hmm. And it, the game is more balanced. It's just not as fun. Right? But, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's like, I don't know. And I can't find the old characters. So the ODOT characters might not even be in the game. Huh. Like, I was trying to figure out how to select them, but I couldn't find out a way to select them. Huh. So ODOT characters might not even be in the game. Huh. So it's just, it's weird. I don't know. It's definitely weird. I don't know what they were trying to do with this. I'm like, it sure. just really is just a cash grab, you know what I mean? So, and by the way, by the way, I still remember seeing all those tweets from D1 being like, hey, look at this care package from Nintendo. They sent me a Switch before its release date. And here I am buying Ultra Street Fighter 2 on my Switch. You're not Illuminati enough. Man. I don't even have a Switch, so... You can't make this mistake, basically. So... so. <laughs> <sighs> Well, yeah. yeah, so I didn't get to play ARMS, because um, I don't have yeah, a Switch, I didn't and get to you were out of the country. Either. Yeah, so. I was out of the country, so... Um, yeah, well, it's doing super well, because everyone... It's, it's one of the early games, early adopting games. Oh, so. uh, USF2? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good, at least. Uh, also, uh, Tekken 7 coming out in two days. Yes. Super excited about that. Indeed. So many games to play. Oh, there's a ton. There's a ton. And then uh, I was actually playing Skullgirls on mobile. Skullgirls on mobile came out. Yes. It's very interesting. So there's a whole story mode and you can like buy moves and like there's all this like, like they basically, it's like, a, it's a mobile grindy game. It's free to play and you gain crystals and you use the crystals to buy things uh -huh. and if you, for drawing random items and character, you know, it's very mobile game-ish. But I've just been sitting, like, I, seriously, before the show, I spent, like, maybe an hour cracking out in the training mode, and all I was doing was big band combos. I, I can't believe there's a, co there's a training mode. That's so cool to me. 
I tried to download it, and my phone is too old and crappy to actually use it. So, really? Yeah. Interesting. It actually okay. said, you cannot install this on your phone. Dang! Yeah. It just denied you. It just denied Dang. me. Okay. So, that sucks, but I'd really like to see it and try it, because I've heard cool things. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and, and like, I don't know, the combos was interesting, and I was having... Not to bring it back to this, but I was having way more fun in the training mode in that game than I've ever had in Street Fighter V. Because <laughs> there's nothing to do in Street Fighter V. I go to training mode, like, I feel like doing fun combos. Looked at the roster. Oh, Urian, let's just do loops. <laughs> let's just do scoopy things there. But, man, like, I was doing these big band combos. Like, I first did the combo. I was like, oh, this is cool. I can get, like, 15 hits. This is neat. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. This character's heavier, so this combo, the combo I was doing originally doesn't work on this one, but I can modify it this mm-hmm. way, and I got like to 18 hits, nice. then I got to 20 hits, and I tweeted Mike, I was like, I got 20 hits with Big Man! Then I was like, wait, wait, and I did more things, and I'm up to 24 now. Sick! Like, it's, I don't know, it's just like, it's really interesting to me, and it's, it's, it's really interesting, like, it's, the controls are really simple. Controls are really, really simple. That. yeah. So you can't even move... Basically, the only way you can move forward is by doing your dash attack, in which you oh, have to go okay, dash okay. and attack. Okay. Do and you, you like could, drag your finger? Yeah, you just swipe forward. You can swipe backwards to make them back dash. Right. right. But then if you let go, they automatically walk towards each other. Oh. So you stay same still. Same Yeah, you basically walk. You stand there for a while, and then they start walking to each other. Huh. And you tap, tap, tap is a three-hit combo for everybody. Swipe down is a sweep. Swipe up is a launcher, and if you touch again, they automatically jump up and do two hits. Interesting. And then you can do dash attack, and there's always a dash attack follow-up. And then, like, I I just found out with um, Peacock, I've got a new special move that if you swipe down twice, he does a teleport and then the punch. So I'll be getting new moves as it goes. But there's also an extra button off to the side that does a special move, and there's a button for the super. Yeah. But, like, I mean, with Big Band, I'm just, like, doing dash attack and a punch, 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 and a launch. Don't do the air combo. Follow it with dash attack and a dash attack, which causes a wall bounce. Okay. Juggle, juggle, juggle into super. Bounces them super high enough that I can juggle, juggle, juggle with the right timing into OTG. You get one OTG. Like, Sick. I was actually doing all this, and I was, like, learning the timing, and, it, like, I was, really like, cool. forgetting my combo and stuff like that. It was actually, I don't know, like, I kind of that sounds cool, had man. fun with it. Yeah. I kind of had fun with it, so. That's awesome. That sounds actually really cool. Yeah. Did I say him for Peacock? I know it's a she. I, I oh, guess I, I just I messed up. Yeah. I just guess I just messed up. Yeah. But I don't know. I just thought it was. I was just having a. It sounds a grand cool. Old time, Gotta tell you. So, yeah. 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 The the move the controls. It sounds like uh, is very similar to how the Injustice Mobile is, which is also you dash, you dash. Oh, uh, okay. Low okay. is a sweep or down is a sweep. You know, uh, and then there's like uh, a special couple special move buttons and a block button. Mm, okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, you're mostly just dragging it around. Yeah, Although but, that game is a little janky, so I uh, sure okay. Skullgirls is. You know, blocking is actually just hold two fingers on the screen in your skull. Oh, nice. You just okay. hold two fingers that, on the screen. That's a really good idea. Basically. And then to throw is you hold two fingers and then you swipe in any direction. You oh, swipe with two nice. fingers. So while blocking, you can actually throw really easily. And that's a really like that. good idea. Yeah. I mean, Mike, I know he said he tried really hard to come up with a way to make it work, you know, for mobile and stuff. And it was really interesting. Well, I definitely have a lot of faith in them. So it's, yeah. you know, if anybody's going to yeah. come up with a cool idea yeah. to make that work. I believe in those guys. Yeah. Uh, are we missing any games that have come out and or are... Well, SF5's 2.1 patch is, I guess, out now. Um, they said I've the been... server's not up yet. Oh, are they still not? not? Someone oh. in the chat just said it's not up yet. Oh, so. wow. Okay, well, there you go. But uh, the patch, in any case, is downloadable. So when mm-hmm. I left uh, to come here... I was downloading the patch on Steam and on PS4. Yeah, yeah. So I I had it. I had like it ten minutes left upstairs when I came down here. So they did okay. delay. Oh, bummer, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. In any case, that's coming out. We've talked about the patch changes in the past. Interestingly, a couple of things were announced since then that actually oh, yeah, were that's right. well, they yeah. had already been uh, changed. It turned out. But they also announced the Vegas stage. And the Vega new. stage, that's right. And, you know, Vega can climb on the fence, and everyone's like, well, another band stage, dude. If you just don't pick Vega, then you're fine. Because that happened sure. in old Street Fighter 2 games, too, before right. Super Turbo, before Super. Like, in Hyper yeah. Fighting, I think he would, like, cling onto the wall, and it was like the... Like, you actually banned it because it was terrible for Vega. Oh, yeah, so It, like, made him way worse. Oh, yeah. So you would ban this. So if no one's playing Vega, you can pick the stage fine. Right, agreed, so. agreed. And I did see, like, Vega has some more damaging combos now and stuff like Saw that. Saw that, too. So, yeah. Yeah, he looks like he might be better. Mm-hmm. And not just a butthole. 
as he is right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, let's just do for some uh, game event community news. Not much to say, to be honest with you, because we actually talked about a lot of the things that I had here. So. Okay, cool. Uh, but I guess Street Fighter Four Champion Edition is coming to the iOS. I don't know. I guess they're doing a new version of Street Fighter Four on the iOS, which... What? Makes no sense to me because I thought there was a whole bunch already. So Street Fighter Four Champion Edition. Yeah, I guess they're just. I mean, let's, what does let's that mean? Uh, an update to the Street Fighter Four iOS game released back in 2010 will be coming to the iOS app of uh, this summer. What? The update includes graphic improvements, updated support for larger mobile devices, and adds Dudley, Ibuki, and Poison to the game's list of play playable fighters. What? Why would they do that? I don't know. They're using all these resources for what? What are you guys doing? Why? I'm so confused, James. I, t I like, don't know. We just talked about USF2, which is just a confusing project. And then that from 2010, like Volt? Is it the yeah, update uh, Volt I think, yeah, I think from so. forever ago? What? I just am so confused. Um... Red Hood, there was a trailer that came out for Red Hood for Injustice 2. Right, right. I was thoroughly underwhelmed by him. <laughs> for sure. He's just, just shooting a bunch bang, of bang, guns. Bang, 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 okay. Let me jump and flip and bang, bang. 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 I was like, mm. Yeah, I don't care about him. Uh, but, you know, knowing knowing NRS, he's going to have some cool gameplay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, for sure. He might look dumb. I just, so. uh, maybe it's just because also I just think the character looks stupid. I mean, he literally just looks like a dude with a red hood on. I think he literally is a dude with a red hood right, on. Right, exactly. That's thing. I, mean, I mean, he's supposed to be um, not Damian Wayne, not, he's not Dick Grayson. He's the one in uh, Jason, Jason Todd. Yeah, yeah. Jason Todd, yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. But, like I said, probably going to have some fun mechanics. So, mm. even if he's dumb, like, think about Captain Cole, right? When I saw that guy, I was like, Whoa, I've never seen such a bad character in my mm -hmm. life. That's the mm -hmm. ugliest, stupidest, jankiest looking dude. He's just Oh, a it's Tim ball. Drake. It's not Jason Todd. It's Tim Drake. Oh, okay. Or maybe, uh, I don't know. Who cares? Whatever. It doesn't yeah, matter. He's the Red Hood. Uh, but then, sure enough, Captain Cold has rad ideas. So I uh, feel like that's, you know, that's what they do. Right. Isn't Tim Drake the one that's in, like, the, the Teen Titans? I don't know. I thought I didn't Tim think no, it is Jason Todd. Drake. Yeah, it is because Tim Drake is the one that's in Teen Titans and he never became the Red Hood, it was Jason Todd. That's I what played I, Ar I played Arkham Knight, right? But he didn't become the Red Hood, but anyways, uh Yeah, it's actually Jason Voorhees. It's Jason Voorhees, that's awesome, dude. Dude, people it's the chat, dude. It's the chat screwing me up, dude. I'm reading shouldn't be reading the Why chat. Why are you reading the chat? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, they also announced that Thanks, uh, Chief Thunder's brother, Eagle, will be showing up in Killer Instinct. That's the new one, huh? That's the new oh, character. Oh, I missed yeah. that news. Interesting. They actually announced that. So um, apparently that is going to... No, I don't read DC at all. No, oh, Red Hood is actually Jason Bourne. Got it. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense, actually. Yeah. Um... But yeah, Eagle is the next character that's going to be joining. Okay, in there, okay, so. cool, cool. So probably built off of Thunder. Thunder's. Uh, I heard he has like bow and arrows. Like he's going to be like oh, bow and arrows. Yeah, I just meant his models probably built off Thunder. Oh, okay. That's okay. what they've done with you know Mira and with right. uh, Kilgore, but they're very different mm -hmm. characters than the characters that they are built off of. So yeah, I feel like that's probably what will okay. happen. Okay, nice, cool. Like that would be rad if he was. I just think it's funny they called him Eagle because Street Fighter guys Hawk, right? T Hawk, and then they made another. Maybe that's oh. intentional. Could be, could be. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom through Infinite will be playable at both E3 and at CEO. Oh, so yes. Obviously, everyone knew it was going to be playable at E3, but after E3 is CEO, and it will be playable there as well. So Capcom will be bringing along some Infinite, so even Excellent. more reasons to head to CEO. Mm -hmm. and I really hope CEO can avoid a uh, Salwag Ram and get their air conditioner working this year. So. Ooh, boy. Please. Because you can't even walk outside to get cool. Like, you could do yeah, that. Yeah, that's right, yeah. could, You know, like, France was... Well, actually, it was pretty humid there, France too. France was yeah. humid outside. And then, we actually got back to Los Angeles and thought, wow, it's so nice and cool here. It was so nice. Yeah. It was, like, the best weather I've felt in a long uh, time. Yeah, so. a breeze. Mm, yeah. It was great. It was great. Wow. It turns out that he's actually Jason Chaffetz. Oh, my gosh. I don't even know who that is. Oh, some jerk-off from Congress. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm glad I don't know. 
And then also, did you see the new infinite that they found with Trish? Yes, I did. It's so, so good. good. It's I so good. It. Yeah. I mean, if someone could perfect that, more power to you. We never thought that anyone would be patient enough to do bionic arm zip, 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 That's zip, right. zip, infinite. But people have done it to time out the game. But the Trish infinite is awesome. Yeah. Very, very cool looking. It's so funny, dude. That's nice work over Because basically you throw the round trip, but you can... The round trip doesn't have... Um, it ignores hit stun deterioration because they figured it would reach Trish eventually right. and that's the end of the combo. But they have figured out a sequence. So they basically figured out how to avoid the baby Metroid and Super Metroid like in the speedrunning community. They're like plink dashing around. Yeah, uh, it's basically the same thing. Like yeah. you've seen them avoid yeah, yeah, the sure. baby Metroid, right? Yeah, it's basically the same thing. So that's it's, it's really cool. Just go to showreacon.com, search, look for Trish Infinite, and you'll be able to find it there. Or so. go to r slash mvc3 on Reddit, which is where I found ah, it. Ah, okay, nice. Got it, got it. Uh, in terms of events that are coming up this weekend, it doesn't look like there's much going on this weekend. Uh, I don't see anything really listed here that's like a multi-day event at all. Wow. Interesting. A free weekend. That's so crazy. After the weekend of all weekends. I know someone could have moved their damn tournament to here. Maybe. God. But, um, uh, Oh, Tekken 7 launch party is happening? Is there, like, an official launch party or something? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess there's something... No, it's, that's just Tekken release there, so... Yeah, there are a bunch of good subreddits for games. There's r slash, slash injustice. There's r slash street fighter. Mm, okay. Oh, yeah, and, and Wizard World Philadelphia is this weekend. Cool, So, man. in Philly, so you can go ahead and check that, so... And there's also the, yeah, the online CPT event for Europe is coming up as well mm -hmm. so there you go uh but yeah not much else going on uh this weekend so yeah sorry i can't think of any other good fighting game reddits uh besides our street fighter yeah there's our fighters i mean do you count like the the injustice reddit yeah our injustice yeah yeah and marvel has one right yeah nbc3 um there's uh mkx or no, maybe just Mortal Kombat. Okay, okay. Now, now that I think about it. I think it's, there's got to be one for Guilty Gear, I would imagine, right? Probably, but I'm not Yeah, yeah. But outside of that, probably not. There's a For Honor. Our For oh, Honor. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. But there's everything else that might be around probably not important at all. Yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay, that's all I have. Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to mention? Any other random gamey things that you wanted to talk about? Uh, you know what? Yeah, the Injustice one is actually pretty casual so far. That's what I've found. Oh, really? Uh, oh, okay. But hopefully that will that will change. There's no active Guilty Gear stuff about it? That's a bummer. Uh, I think they live on Discord. There's oh. definitely a Guilty Gear Discord, and then every character has a Discord. Yeah, uh, the same exists for the NRS community, uh, and they've tried to publicize that, but I don't know how well it's gotten out, really. So if anybody's interested, please let me know. I, or maybe I'll just tweet it once I get home, uh, just to publicize it again. But yeah, it's uh, it's a really good, well done okay. Discord. Okay, cool. And I guess our Guilty Gear is a thing, but maybe people don't go there or something. I don't know. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, there's Dust Loop and there's Shore Yukon and there's you know, mm -hmm. all those. Of course, of course, yeah. Oh, man. Well, Paris was cool. You know, definitely happy to have gone. Um, I'm glad that you ended up making it. <laughs> God, was, that's right. It was a tough I time. wonder if I should tell people my, my, my France story on here, dude. Well, you were talking about it on Twitter, weren't you? Yeah, I was. So basically, uh, just, just, just so some people might not be on Twitter at all. But I was supposed to fly on the same flight as you on Wednesday to get to Paris. And, I and actually, I do want to mention this because this is a good public service announcement as <laughs> That's well. That's true, yeah. Actually. So I get to the place, I to check in my luggage, and I hand them my passport, and they look at my passport, and they're like, we can't let you on the plane. Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? My passport expires August 20th, 2017. I'm fine. And they're like, actually, you need to have a three-month window to make it in there. So if your passport expires within the next three months, the passport, we cannot let you into the country. And I'm like, what? And I started freaking out 
And yeah. I think they were I think they were annoyed by that. So I don't think that they were gonna let me on the plane no matter what. Because the lady was like, You need to know these things before you give it's your responsibility. And I'm like, how are you supposed to find out? Like where are you supposed to be told that this is even a thing? I've never heard of it. I don't know. Right? And then I was told that some countries even have a six month window that you have to have. Why don't you just have a passport that ends six months before it says it did? Because it's not useful if you Right? I, I was so confused. And I was like, what the hell? And so literally the lady comes back and he's like, go to this address. Go there at 6 in the morning because there's going to be a line that builds up. And get your passport, blah, blah, blah. And do all this stuff. And you can do it one day expedited. Here's your itinerary. You're going to need this to prove that you need it now. <sighs> Fine. So... Basically, I didn't sleep that night, right? I was just, I was up at like three, I think I fell asleep from like three to five, and then I Ugh. woke up. And then I checked the internet just to make sure I had everything ready to go to the passport thing, and then right. I'm going to the federal building. You know the federal building right next to UCLA and everything like that. And I read on the internet, it was like, our passport photo section area is down. You must bring your own passport photo. Uh. I was like, what? And so I had to look up 24 hour place that maybe does pass i found a walgreens oh man six in the morning go there get my passport photo for like 17 dollars oh, and wow. then i drive over there and sure enough there's a giant line that i have to wait in line for the will call window wait in this giant line go there and be like look i need my passport today they're like okay give me a ticket now go stand in that line so i go stand in a second line basically to get in there to do the, the metals detecting and searching and all yeah. that stuff like that. So you get through there to stand into another line to get to the window so that they can assign you a number so that you can sit down and wait in line until they call your number to go to the window to talk to people. After I finally did, and the lady was like, okay, I can't guarantee you your passport will be done by 2 p.m. My flight is at 3.15. My flight is at 3.30, okay? And they're like, yeah, we can't it's... guarantee you that. So just come back at like 12, like 1 o'clock and check to see if it's early, done early. I'm like, wonderful. Cost me $170 to do this, okay? Uh... X for one day expedited. So I leave. Yeah. I go eat. I go home, and I was smart. I actually went home, grabbed all my luggage, and put it in the car. Oh, uh, yeah. And then drove back because I was like, if I need to rush to the airport, I can just go straight there, and I will have to pay a buttload of money for parking, but hopefully I can expense it to somebody, right? <laughs> yeah. So I go back there at 1 o'clock, okay? There's nobody in line at the will call window, which is where you're supposed to go check. Okay. I run over there. I'm like, yay, okay. So I sit down, and I'm like, hey, I, I go there, and he's like, Oh, it's not ready yet. Come back in an hour, right? No, this was at this was at uh, twelve thirty. I'm sorry, it was twelve thirty. Okay. I did this. I was like, okay, that's fine. But you know what? I'm just gonna go sit in my car for an hour, right? Because I'm just, I guess why yeah, not, you do. Right? Yeah. So I just went to go sit in my car, just messing around with the phone, doing Twitter stuff. Sure. I was like, I don't want to wait a, a whole hour. I'm gonna try my luck. I'm just gonna go back in forty minutes. Sure. So yeah, it's like one well. ten or something like that or whatever, or one o'clock that I go back over there, and now there's fifty people waiting for the will call window. And I was like, what the hell? I I guess everyone came back at one time because that's when they were told to come back. So I wait right. in line and I call the, the airport. I'm like, can you please change my flight? And they're like, we can't do this. You have to get whoever booked the ticket. Red Bull booked the ticket. So I talked to Red Bull. Holy and the crap. guy in the email was like, I'm sorry, it's bake day and everybody's on holiday right now and it's <laughs> 11 p.m. So I can't change right. this flight for in you. Europe, yeah. I was like, oh my God. The line's moving a little bit faster than I think. And I finally get to the front. My passport is there. It's 140. So I'm like, all right, my flight is at 3.30. I have, like, enough time, right? So let's do this. Get in my car, run, drive as fast as I can, get to the airport, can't find parking. Cannot find parking. Circle here, there, here, there, everywhere. And, like, people are fighting for parking. Oh, and, like, man. all this garbage is happening. Finally find parking. Grab my luggage. Run as fast as I can to go over there. I'm like, can I check in? It is 2.40. My flight is at 3.30. Oh. And they're like, you have to ha check in your luggage an hour beforehand. Right. It's too late. Flights. 
it's too late. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Please, please let... And like, I start freaking out again, right? Yeah. And then the lady's like, let me see if I can put you on the 6 a.m. flight. I mean, the 6 p.m. flight, three hours late, like two and a half hours later. The one that I was trying to get onto and couldn't get onto. They finally did it. They got me onto there, but I was on standby. Are you serious? I was the first person on the list of standby. And I was like, I really hope someone else gets denied because their passport is three months... (laughs) So oh, I go no. finally do that, and to be on, to be fair, after I freaked out and I could tell the people helping me were like, "This guy's going insane." I actually did apologize to them. Like another lady, I was over there, and I literally walked up to her, and I'm like, "I'm sorry. Like I'm, I was just freaking out. I didn't mean to. Not your fault." And she was just like, "Did you get another flight?" And I was like, "Yes." Yeah. She's like, "Okay. I really hope you made." So I, I oh, made sure to apologize to these people because I felt bad. But then I basically had like three hours to kill before I had to board, and I did right. it, and I finally got on the plane. Right. I had been basically awake forever. At That's this like point a twenty-four in time. hour odyssey. Yeah, and then I fly on the plane for ten hours and don't sleep because I can't sleep on the yeah. plane. Finally land, make it all the way to the hotel, and then I passed out for like three hours until you guys woke me up for dinner. Right. But that was my uh, attempt to. That was my. Trip to Paris, basically. That is a it harrowing was, adventure. Man. It was, it was not funny, dude. It was not fun. No, it was I not imagine. fun at all. Cause I was freaking. I was just panicking. Yeah. Shout out to the Red Bull guys. They were the whole time. They were communicating with email. Like I'm trying. I'm trying to do right. this. And holy crap, dude. This was Air France. This was Air France that this all happened. Yeah, on, but so. I don't, it wasn't Air France's issue, right? It sounds like it's just government. Yeah, it's just that's just the way it works. And somebody told me that. You know, they were denied before, Ooh. but they just, like, begged their way onto the plane, and they still managed to get on. But, like I said, I could kind of read the situation. I could tell those the, the first ladies that I freaked out on were not happy with my freaking out. And, like, they were, like, almost, like, kind of at that point where they're, like, this jerk, we're not going to let him on mm. kind of thing. You know what I mean? So I read the situation, and I was not going to push it. Boy. Ugh. But, yeah, I did make it there. You finally did. I did finally make it there. And uh, the only good thing that came out of it is I had no jet lag problems when I was over there because I fell asleep that night very quickly. So, yeah. Yikes. That is a that is a tale. Tough tale. Yeah. I mean, it was just crazy because everything that could have went wrong went wrong. You know what I mean? Right. It was just like everything that went yeah, wrong. I've never heard of that... Uh... Requirement. You know, yeah. That uh-huh. So my public service to everybody yes. is if you are planning to travel and you need a passport and you are going to a country and your passport is close to expiring, look up on the internet. Yeah, like within a year, I guess. Yeah, That's, look yeah. up on the internet. The other best thing about this is I don't have to worry about this shit for another 10 years. Yeah. But you best believe when I, when I have one year left on that passport, I am renewing it yeah. right away. Definitely. Right away, dude. Oh, man. Look, Air France, I think, is quite nice, actually. Yeah. I had a fine time on it both ways. When last year, we were on Air France as well. Uh-huh. But on Air France, actually, I had Lufthansa last oh, year. Oh, that's so right. Yeah. That's right. Uh-huh. I had Air France, and it was all good. And, uh, yeah. I mean, that wasn't their fault. Like, they're super nice. And they also, they give you free booze. Was and it not, free? Yeah, dude. So, so, when, so when I'm flying to Paris, right, uh, the guy next to me, uh-huh. the way, the way. The, the steward asks, um, what do you want to drink? And he says, I'll have a beer and white wine. <laughs> <laughs> and she asked me, and I was like, I'll have the same. <laughs> like, who thinks of that? I was going to say, can I have a beer? But right, a uh-huh. beer and white wine simultaneously? Dang. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, dude, and then, like, <laughs> ha- partway through the flight, they just open up this thing in the back with drinks and snacks that you can just go to yeah, and get yourself, right. including these tiny little Eskimo pie ice cream bar mm-hmm. things. I, you best believe I got, like, three of those, dude. I, seriously, I was just, like, ice cream, just eating ice cream oh, all day. Yeah. It was so good. Oh, man. So, I was all good on the actual flight itself, yeah. uh, but I had crazy jet lag. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um... Each night I was there, I went to sleep at maybe like one or whatever, which uh-huh, is not, uh-huh. that's fine for me, but um, then I woke up at like 3.50 in the morning, mm-hmm. and that was luckily just before E-League, so I watched all the E-League, uh-huh. right, but uh, I couldn't go back to sleep after that, so I figured, why not walk around Paris for five miles? 
<laughs> so I did from about 6.30 to about 10. And then uh, at 10 a.m. I went to sleep again and I was asleep for three hours or something. Yeah. And then we had to do stuff for Red Bull oh. Kumite. And then I, and we did it. And then I went back to the nap again. And then we had dinner. And then it was like the same cycle for yeah. like two days, three uh-huh. days. So you're actually not jet lagged at all coming back then, huh? I had no schedule at all. It was like yeah, I, I slept, uh-huh, I slept uh-huh. for like two or three hours every two or three hours. Just the whole time I was there. Yep. Uh, but last night it was fine. I went to sleep at about 12.30 and I woke up at about 9 and I feel like I'm mm-hmm. alright. I did bring some coffee because I was you know, starting to feel like I was a little bit tired. But yeah. yeah. What, what, so someone asked me what games I played on the plane. I played, uh, on the 3DS, I played a little bit of the Shovel Knight add-ons, which were Plague Knight and Spectre Knight. I played some of Blaster Master on the way back. I definitely played Tetris as well. But I actually ended up watching a lot of movies on yeah. the plane. So I just ended up watching movies. So I played Civ. It's a good one. It's a good one. It helps pass the time. Oh, I teleported. But I also slept for a while. Anyway, anything else going on? No, I'm actually pretty hungry. I don't know how to explain that. Oh, that's your phone? That was my I've phone. I've never heard your phone make that noise you before. You know what? I, when I need to ma- or have, make sure I wake up, I will change my alarm because I'm not used to it. Okay, that's pretty smart. Yeah. I so like that. I will, that's a good call. I will get used to the same one on unimportant days, and then I will oh, change man. it to like the craziest that's thing. Funny. I think I meant to set that for a.m. Because I definitely did not hear... That's why I didn't hear any of my alarms this morning. Oh, my God. Okay, well, that makes sense. Okay. Oh, man. That's oh, a good strat. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, I'm actually hungry, so I need to get some food. Yeah, so. and I got to take a major whiz, because I just drank all this coffee, <laughs> and I'm currently dancing. Oh, you're doing the, the I don't David know how dance. obvious that is, but... David dance. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you are. You, I know you are well acquainted with it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I've seen it on commentary many times. Yeah, many, many times. Because I, in order to wake up in the morning for com- for commentary, I drink a buttload of coffee. So then I'm sitting there at the commentary desk for like two hours just dancing because I gotta pee constantly. But if I didn't have the coffee, I wouldn't be awake to commentate. So I, would I rather be awake or would I rather have to take a major win? But the best part is like there are sometimes where David will like, literally will be commentating and I'll be talking and David's just like. And then runs away. Yeah, I'm just going to do it right there. And then I actually try to keep doing the commentary like I'm talking to David. I'm always like, oh, yeah, oh, that was actually good. Do you really think that he meant to do this? That's actually really good. But, you know, uh, you know, the situation that we've always run into whenever this happens, you know, I try to do my best to be professional. Like, you're not gone, right? I mean, that kind of makes sense. You don't need to break the illusion or anything like that. Um, except the one time... We were at Evo two years ago. We were doing commentary for Mortal Kombat. And uh, David did that. And I'm sitting there pretending like I'm talking to David. I'm doing commentary like he's here. Like asking questions and like like I'm talking to someone. And then they put the camera on us after the match was over. And it was just me. And I was like, thanks, guys. Thanks. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> when that happened. I yeah, I know, right? It's so quite, it's quite a tale. That. So mad about that, dude. Yeah. So like, can't you tell, like, I'm talking by myself? Why would you switch the camera back to us? I don't know. And, like, if you ever hear me summarize what's been going on for the past, like, <laughs> a minute or two, or last two rounds, that's kind of your hint right there. I'll be like, because, you know, because that was really interesting last round when he made the comeback and was able to beat him with the really smart read on that. Like, I'm trying to give him the information and stuff, so, yeah. Yeah, that's true. No. How do you know, Internet? You don't know the veracity of those claims. Well, I'm not touching your hands at any point You have no idea. I have no idea. And you can't prove it either way. God. Okay. Anyways. (laughs) uh, Oh, yeah. I mean, the Tekken Tour was announced. So the the IP, the the, the Injustice one was announced with $600,000. Tekken one was announced with $200,000. So now we've got three games with... Uh, world tours. Did we Actually, talk about that previously? I think so. KI yeah, yeah. obviously has one. A KOF is trying to do one as well. Right. So guilty gear. What is jump? Anyways, um, I hear that. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for kicking in with us, and thanks for hanging out. Um, I really like my jellyfish pirate shirt. I'm really happy about this. You I'm acquainted with that. Oh, yes. Okay. okay. 
super happy. Okay. Anyways, uh, I guess we'll see you guys. All right. See everybody. Have a good night. All right. Peace out. Peace out. I want to sing my alarm now. Boom, boom, boom. You know, as a theme song. You what know? was your, yeah, play it? Summit. <laughs> That's a very festive birdie. I always save the annoying ones for these emergency <laughs> yeah. situations. Dude, so uh, I mentioned I have this piece of crap phone, right? And my phone uh, updated itself recently, and when it did so, for whatever reason, all of the ringtones that I had put on it died. Oh no! And so it's only down to like the default. Just terrible ringtones. Oh, no. So in order to make myself remember that I needed to put on, like, a new uh-huh. ringtone, I put on the dumbest, worst ringtone that the thing had, and I just haven't taken care of it since then. I've been stuck on this. <laughs> you haven't bothered to put the new ones on there yet? Yeah, it's just been super... Uh. It, it, even though every single time I hear it, I'm like, ugh, I don't want to hear that anymore. It, uh... What is your ringtone? Well... Trying to get it on there, but as I said, I have a super slow, crappy phone. Uh, let's see, it's turning on. It's getting there. This phone is older than me. That's it. That's it. I hate it, but I still haven't. It still hasn't convinced me to actually put on the ones that I want. (laughs) It's not doing its job. Oh, my God. Yeah, that would wake me up, though. Oh, it sucks. Yeah, it totally does wake me up. I hate it. But. Anyways, I need to go get some food. All right, see ya. Peace out, everybody. Birdie, mm. tweet it up. <laughs>